What up, what up, what up, what up? Let's let the room fill in. Let's let the room fill in. Let's see what see where we at tonight. Let's see where we going with it. I'm trying to see where we at. Huh? The following program is rated TBMAL. It contains strong language. Okay. Smack it up, flip it, rub it down. What's happening? Respects. Respects. I'm going to shout everybody out. We're going to let the room fill up. I appreciate y'all. Let's let some people get in here and then we're going to get it cracking about the golden era of hip hop. Why it means so much to us and why it's so important for these shows and document, docu-series and documentaries or documentaries. We're going to let the room fill up a little bit. I'm going to shout people out. When you're in the chat, just be mindful. When you come into the room, wipe your feet. What I mean by that is announce your city and state so I can salute you properly and let everybody know where we coming from, where we at, and who's in the building. Make sure that y'all hit that like button on the YouTube to push up our algorithm. I'm going to acknowledge everybody's message. Make Don't forget to hit that chat, that cash app. We're going to have some legends in the building tonight. And I've got a whole bunch of questions for y'all or ready to answer a whole bunch of questions for y'all. But I do appreciate y'all coming into the to the fold. I don't do lives a lot, but I think it's time for me to get out here and speak my piece. Um, I got a nice fan base. So we're going to let the room fill up a little bit. Make sure y'all share the um, if everybody could hear me clearly. Please hit me with a thumbs up emoji. Anybody that's watching, you can hear me clearly. Hit me with a thumbs up emoji so we know that everybody's getting the sound. All right. I'm just reading some of the chat. I'm getting ready to bring some of my people in. Get your questions ready because it's going to be a great night of education. Education is the key. You definitely gonna get educated. So um we're gonna give it another give it to five minutes, see how many people come in and we get things started. All right. In the beginning, who's up in here? DC stepping in the building, Shot Town, Angela Dickinson, smack it up and flip it. DC in the building, the enemy's public, salute the craze. I appreciate you, fam. I appreciate you. Let's see who else up in here so I can acknowledge y'all properly. Ramble. He said, dope content. Back in the day, you had to learn your history. It's about time these, my camera's in the way, so hold on. These kids learn, let me get this right, about the legends. Of course, of course, that's what we hear. So share some of this stuff on your um, social media before we get started. All right, who else is in here? Uh, let's see. We got the thumbs up so people could hear us. New Brunswick, New Jersey in the building. Okay. Let me see what we're doing here. Beverly McFadden in the building. Ramble. Let's see if we, we can get it cracking. H-Town, Texas in the building. Let's salute y'all properly. Everybody that's coming in with the, their city and state, in the beginning, I'm going to just post everybody so y'all can see who's in the building and how much reach we getting. You know what I mean? It's definitely respects to everybody, all 15 of the people that's in the building tonight. Hassan Burton, peace family. Roxbury in the building. We got H Smith. Let me let me salute you properly, Hassan. There we go. Roxbury. Who else? 
Let's get them in there. Share this on your social media. We got Nolia, New Orleans in the building. A. Smith was popping. Okay. I'm just trying to read y'all. H-Town. Okay. So first of all, what did y'all think of the show tonight, man? I mean, Big Daddy Kane is a, a staple in hip hop. Brooklyn represented a lot. Um, what did y'all think of the show? Let me know in this chat what y'all was thinking of the show tonight. Um, did you learn anything? And then we get to some of these messages. Get your questions ready because I'm getting ready to bring some of the legends in the room. I, I want to wait for a couple of more people to come in the room and then I'll get the legends in the building. Let me get them on the text. Let them know we warming things up. And then we'll get it cracking, y'all. That's just how we do. Uh... We'll see where they go. we we'll see how it goes. Who was who was some of your Big Daddy Kane um favorite songs? Mine's particularly was Ain't No Half Stepping was my joint. Hassan Burton said, Epic, you always do great work. I appreciate that, Hassan. I appreciate you coming into the room showing me love. I need y'all to share these lives on your social media. I need y'all to hit Big Daddy Kane right now on Instagram. Let them know we're talking about them. Armones, I, I appreciate Armone Davis. Let me make sure I acknowledge you. He hit me with the sticker. I appreciate that. Um, and if y'all contribute to the show, just so y'all know, this is all going to produce the show. It's all going to bring these greats on here so y'all can ask them questions. We can do more shows with different artists. Um, you know, that's what it's about. So every little bit helped, $5, $10, $20, whatever it is, $0.99, cent, $2, I appreciate it all because it's definitely going to help. So if y'all want to be uh, a part of the show and help the show grow, I appreciate that. Um, let's see what they say. Favorite albums. They got some favorite albums in here. Set it off with some of the favorite records. We got a Big Daddy thing, Warm It Up Kane, Smooth Operator. Um, yeah. Like I said, Ain't No Half Stepping was my favorite. The beat was dope. His delivery was dope. Um, you know, just when that dropped with that, mm, 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 that was bananas for me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, what do you think y'all going to ask uh, Paris Smith from EPMD? Or, uh, you know, Fly Ty from um, the founder of Cold Chillin' that started that whole movement, the Big Daddy Kane, the Roxanne Shante, the MC Shan. I'm pretty sure he has a lot to say. So I'm just waiting for them to warm up. Let me see what's good and let, we'll see how it goes, you know. Everything is scheduled for them to come on. So I'm waiting for them to come into the room. Until then, let's talk about it. New Brunswick in the building. Let me read this right here. What it say? Queens, New York, dope content. Back in the day, you had to learn your history. Okay, I think I read that one. Angela Dickinson said gratitude. I appreciate that. Let me get this one up. Salute the God, Big Daddy Kane, Snoop and Scrap Lover, Far Rockaway's finest in the building, Far Rockaway's in the building. I appreciate that. I don't know. I don't know what this is right here. Okay. C Flux Sing. Okay. Wombat. Okay. Laurelton, Queens and Atlanta, Georgia. Appreciate you, fam. Y'all don't forget to hit that, 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 you know, that, um, that chat, them stickers, the super chat, everything helps. You know what I mean? Uh, we getting ready to go live. Let me see if I get these guys on the phone. And we get it cracking. 740. 
Y'all gonna see how I do this for real. Get them questions ready. We get ready to have some real good convo. Let me see what's good. Let me see what's good. Let me hit um. So who was your favorite artist on um Cold Chilling? Who was your favorite artist on Cold Chilling? Okay, my man Doom Mega. Let's put up his shout out to the one of the raps gifts, Craze the King of Content. For years, I have been following your fantastic exploits of the golden age legends. Please continue your hard work. I appreciate that, my brother. I do. Um I would ask Fly Ty, was he able to contain himself listening to G-Rap's records in his lyrics? Records, his lyrics. Okay. Okay. My mom said, Raw, get the job done. Okay. Unk just came into the building. Something's going on with his camera, but when his camera's up, we'll be in. Marky Rayford, peace. Oh, we're going to have a good, we're going to have some good convo tonight. Trust me. Y'all going to learn something, too. Y'all going to learn something. Armand, I appreciate you, my brother. I appreciate you. You showing us a lot of love. I got Unk in the building. Unk, you ready? Give me a head nod if you ready, Unk. Okay. Without further ado, we're going to start it off with my uncle, Fly Ty, the founder of Cold Chilling Records. What's happening, Unk? I'm pretty good. I'm still here. I know you are, man. They 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 want to talk to you tonight. They want to see, you know. Um, so I'm gonna start it off by thanking you for even having the mindset to open a cold chilling. So give them a little little bit of history of how you started before cold chilling, so they have a little bit of that. Oh, okay. I started um in radio. Right. Um. As far as hip hop was concerned, you know, I produced the Mr. Magic Rap Attack. Mm -hmm. And the Mr. Magic Rap Attack was the first hip hop radio show ever. There was no other place you could hear hip hop but with Mr. Magic. Okay. In fact, there weren't, there were very few record labels, maybe three, maybe Shook L, Profile, and Joy. I mean, well, and four, and Joy and Tommy Boy. Okay. So, but there are very few, uh, very few records. So we started playing cassettes of kids off the street, you know, um, just to have just to have a playlist, right? So we played it like like the Fearless Four or Treacherous Three before they were groups. You know, a lot of them got a lot of groups got deals because we played their cassettes on the radio. You right, know, uh, Houdini, Force MD, Stetson Sonic, mm -hmm. you know, Roxanne Shante, and, and quite a few. I'm not Eric B and Rock Kim, mm -hmm. quite a few. I'm not even thinking about, but you know, that was my start, you know, with the Mr. Magic Rap Attack. Um, eventually, radio um, record companies listened to us exclusively, right? And and if they would hear something that was something that they never heard before, they would immediately get in touch with us to find out if anybody signed it. Mm. So you so, guys were like the you guys at that point was really the gatekeepers to the labels. The we were labels. we were we were an A and R source for sure. Okay. All right. And um you know whether it was Tom Silverman or Corey Robbins or Joe and Sylvia Robinson. Well, um, uh, let them know who that who they associated with. What independent? Well, Tom people. Silverman owned Tommy Boy Records. Okay. Corey Robbins owned Profile. Okay. Uh, Joe and Sylvia Robinson owned Sugar Hill. Okay. Fred Maneo owned Select. Okay. And then Sal Apatello had Fever Records. Right. You know, so, and you know, and, and uh, there's a few other ones, but I can't even think of right now. But. They would call us when they heard something we played 
that they never heard before. So we started making deals then. Okay. All right, we making playing cassettes, getting contacted, making deals. Uh, we went from that to uh, managing artists. Um, you know, it was it was a thing. Mr. Magic, with, with whoever the group we got a deal for, Magic would just tell them, "Ties your manager." Right. I had no desire to be a manager. Why not? I, oh, because I was also in on the other side of the radio, WBLS and WLIB. I was a sportscaster, and I did hard news. Okay. And I, and I'm a young guy, so I was like the Cub reporter. If you want to say, you want to name it, mm. I was like 22, 23 years old. You know, and I and you know and and, and after, for me. Listen, hip hop started for me was not the business of hip hop. It was the fun, the street of hip hop. Mm. Now we didn't call it hip hop because it wasn't called hip hop to the eighties. But when I was fifteen, like nineteen seventy two, it was just the par the party in the park. Okay. Or the party in front of the building. Or the party at Coney Island. Or the right. party at Reese Beach. So when did it become hip hop? Why did be, why did it become hip hop? Hip hop, the name hip hop came along in the early eighties. All right, and I there's, there's so many stories as to why that happened. You know, I believe. You know, I remember Sylvia Robinson talk, was telling me a story about in the nineteen fifties the party was called the Hop. Mm, the Hop. Right. So you she she, she said she she described so even that they even had. Parties called sock hops, where you went to the party in your socks. <laughs> All right. Gym hops, where you went to the gym to have the party. Right. So she said between Cowboy and Starsky, they would always say to the hip hop. And in her mind, I don't know how true it is, there was because the word hip meant what's happening. It was right. fly. Hip meant fly. Right. So if you put hip hop together. You was going to the fly party. Right. So that was the how how what I heard about. It. All right. Mm -hmm. Then it just took on its own life to me. Because listen, there's nobody, and as much I have love and respect for cohort, but there's nobody who's got in the lab and said, I'm going to invent something called hip hop. Mm. Hip hop developed over time by contributions from different people along the way. You understand, right. you know, and it was many boroughs. I would definitely say it was New York, but it was many boroughs and many things going on in different boroughs, and people didn't go out of their boroughs. So no, the Bronx wouldn't know what was going on in Brooklyn, and they they barely went to Harlem, and mm -hmm. and, and 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 nobody went to Staten Island. You know, in Queens, you went for the girls. What about Strong Island? What's that? <laughs> See, stop playing. Uh, stop playing. <laughs> One of your biggest artists was from Strong Allen. No doubt. No, I listen, Rock Kim. Listen, Rock Kim. I managed Rock Kim. That's right. Eric and Rock Kim. So Rock Kim was from Long Island. Right. So, so talk to them. So tonight's episode was with Big Daddy Kane. And one of the parts in the episode, you know, I thank you for giving them some feedback on how you started and where it came from. But I want to dive a little bit into the episode because they just finished watching the episode of Big Daddy Kane. And you were in the episode and you were saying back then when you thought somebody was hot, you would go get Kane to battle him. And I guess that's how you. Well, no, well, no, 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 no. no. When I thought somebody was hot. All right. A network, I would take them out. Like when I was young, I used to shoot single. Right. Teenage young. And me and my boys used to travel looking for CeeLo games. Anywhere. And just mm -hmm. trying to. So that's what I used to do with Big Daddy Kane. Okay. I used to If I heard that somebody was nice in some neighborhood. Right. I would take Kane to battle them on the street corner. Okay. All right. And I knew Kane was going to eat them up. You know. So that was Kane to me. Right. All right. And, and 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 it got to a, what I would say was not battle Kane. I would say for me to even consider you battle me. Mm. If you beat me, then you got a shot. 
Hold up. So you saying you used to rap? Yeah, I should rap. Get the hell out of here, Uncle. Me? I, no, no, let me, tell, let me just say this to you. <laughs> let me just say this to you. Let now, me, that's me, the me, first me. you ever told me that one. Because, you know, I, I, I just, I mean, listen, everybody rapped or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> rap, you you know? get on here cutting up. You know damn well you didn't rap. Oh. Yeah, I did. Yeah, did this, you? you asked G, man. First, first of all, I use G rap and Kane rhyme to bust your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, oh, so you were cheating. <laughs> especially G rap. I take some off the middle of the album that you never heard and bust your ass. Uh huh. <laughs> and then I got this kid IU. I started using his shit. <laughs> so that's how you got your battle going on. I would so that was how I eliminated people. Wow. Wow. Because I would have them in front of their boys and I would rap one of the G rap joint, the Kane joint, the IU joint. And their crew would say, Oh man, you can't mess with OG. And therefore I could move on. Nah, nigga, you can't you can't come to culture. Right. Hey, um, mm. Super Lover C is in the chat. He says, spit some bars. Nah, I ain't. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Shout out to Super Lover C, Casanova Rudd in the chat. I'm a, I'm a, listen, I'm a Super Lover C fan, man. Yeah, so am I. You know, no, I take, I take that back. I ain't no fan. I'm an air conditioner. <laughs> that's how much you love hip hop, right? That's how much I love Super Lover C. Okay, that's my brother too, Armand Davis. Thank you for the super sticker. You got any questions, Armand? Post them so um. Um, can uh, answer it for you. So, so hold on before you go on. Can I see? Can I see you? Yeah. So why you got me looking at myself twice? Oh, you want to see me? Okay, no problem. Yes. I don't want to look at me. I want to look at you. Focus. I there you go. There okay. you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about uh, the first album of Big Daddy Kane and when he was bringing those records in. Um, what what was your thought process when you was hearing like I guess we could start with like well the first stuff listen the, the first, first stuff from Kane I didn't know who was bringing it in okay what do all you mean all I knew was I always met at Marley's house or Marley's studio okay and Marley had the beats that's all I knew all okay. right and Kane you know, the first thing we did was so called get into it you okay know? and Marley I watched Marley put that beat together you know whatever. And that's all I knew. I didn't, I didn't. I never saw artists bring nothing. All right. Okay. Whenever I got there, I was always under the assumption Marley was producing. Mm. You know, and Marley was my exclusive producer. Right. You know, so uh, it was Marley collaborating with Kane or Biz, and I pretty much was there. You know, I, I was like, I would give them their space in the beginning. Right. That's how I operated. And then I would come towards the end. And when I came, I didn't just stick my head in. I stayed. Right. And I and 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 and, and if, if everybody knew that because I was a radio person. Right. So I understood radio and I understood that radio stations receive so many songs a week, they ain't got time to listen to your whole song. You got to catch them in the first beat or the first bar or the first measure. So my thing was always, you got to catch me in the first measure or I'm going to say, that shit is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had a lot of people salty, because uh, I know how you uh, get it up. Now, a, lot, a lot of them. So I, I had G-Rap, whoever. Right. I come and say, what the fuck is that? And I walk out. <laughs> So everybody, if you notice, most of my artists, their first measure hits you. Right. And when you say a first measure, you mean like the first eight bars? Right, the first eight bars, right, right. Well, there's Ill Street Blue, doom, doom, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. When I first heard that, it didn't have that. Right. It was a hey, da, 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 da. hey Unc, PMB yeah. just popped in. I want to pop them on the screen. We good? Please do, please do. Let me make me make sure I can do this. How I do this? Hold on, hold on. This is my. Let me see. Oh, this is how we do it. My bad. P, what's good? Okay, what up, Jake Billion? There we go. Ah, there you okay, go. Fly tie. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great, thank you. I'm I'm here. Right, you know, right. I, I want. Let me tell you another thing. I wanted to add. Um. Uh, 
crazy is I'm 65 years old. Okay. So hip hop is a senior citizen. Right. And I right. am hip hop. You understand? Yeah. And like I told you, think about I, I was in hip hop before I was in the business of hip hop. Right. And we didn't call it hip hop. It was just a party in the park, the party in front of the building. But I was 15. So you're talking 50 years for real. Right. All right. And, you know, and, and, and so the love of it, you talk about the love of, 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 of a child of, of when you first when you first get that opportunity at the age when you first get the opportunity to break away from home. When you can stay out a little bit later, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. When you don't have to be in the house when the lights come on, right? This is this is how what hip hop mean to me. I was able to go to somewhere far away in my world, right? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't the only one. All kids like me, so you know, um, hip hop is, is is like I was saying earlier. As time went on, from the from whatever you want to say your beginning is. I can't say, I'm, I'm, and I, I can't reiterate this enough. I can't say one person got in a lab and said, "I'm going to create hip hop." Right. I think everybody from everywhere, from Long Island, from Brooklyn, from Queens, everybody has something to do with putting it to where it is now. Right. You know, and some people, you know, listen. Oh, now I you look, wanna, now you want to include Long Island? Uh, now, uh, now, because now, this now, is I, I look, I I look at PMD. Now. No, I look at PMD. Everybody didn't jump into the business of it. Right. PMD did. Yeah, yeah. right, Fly. You understand? Yeah. Everybody didn't do, do you know what I'm saying? Some people learn. Andre Harrell did. Yes, R.I.P. <laughs> all right. Yes. Some, there, were, there were people who were, were artists, mm -hmm. all right, who jumped into the business of it and learned a whole different aspect. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you, this. this when you get into the now, once you're talking about hip hop music, the production of hip hop music, whether it's Big Daddy Kane or anybody else, now you get into the business of it. Right. The so business is. Go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. The business, the business couldn't is not is is exactly that. Right. Business. I right. want I wanted PMD to, to 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 step in a little bit on the business end, and then we're gonna answer a couple of questions for you. Okay. All right, so P, yeah. you know, um, one thing we, we was talking about uh, Big Daddy Kane's importance and his impact on the music, but I want you to tap in on your thoughts about his impact at the time and what you thought about his music, and then we could talk a little bit about how you came from an artist at that point and really incorporated the business, so to speak, like Unk said. Yeah, well, the biggest thing, fly time. First of all, it's always good to have when you have somebody older than you in the game. Then, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it takes a lot off of you. It's like right. when we was around Chuck D, when we was around Run DMC in the Runs House tour. So right. you know, fly just set it off right off top. Like wherever hip hop began for you, and even more illa when you couldn't come out the house, and then you got that opportunity. He keep it right in perspective when you got that chance where you got a where you can go out to a house party or you can witness it that was your beginning on what mm -hmm. hip hop actually said to you right so it was like listening it in its phases so again and listening to Ty you understand the phases because I came in first of all before hip hop was hip hop through my older brother through Smitty D and the Rock Squad okay mm -hmm. And then that led to like when Planet Rock and then uh, Funky Sensation and all of that came. But then you had the Sugar Hill Gang, Rapper's mm -hmm. Delight. You had King Tim the Third. I mm -hmm. still was in the passenger seat watching all of this happen. And then it started to progress after it got past the Run DMC, the end of Grandmaster Flash. Then that's when Biz Mark and the Pick and Boogers. And, you know, I still was fixing my 68 Camaro. Right. So I remember right. once I had it up and running and I was driving to New Haven, that's when I heard make the music with your mouth is. Now I'm driving in a car that I had to fix and create, not buy. By the time I get home, Biz is rapping with Kane. A whole nother level. So now you got the light biz market. You didn't even get to look at the cold chilling part. 
you wasn't even aware that you was going to end up at sleeping bag, which is downstairs. Okay, so mm -hmm. keep it in perspective. Now you hit uh, Big Daddy Kane before he even gets on where Biz gave him the special intro. And then right after that is where we got on because I was a DJ. And at that time, I was cutting Latoya from Just Ice. So mm. that's how I ended up at sleeping bag. I was like, Dad, all these cats getting on. Yo, it's our time. Rock him is from Wine Dance. That's like three towns over. We got Public Enemy in Nassau County. That's right there. Bismarck is right here from Brentwood. Let me look on this record cover, Sleeping Bag Records, and then boom. And then that's what put me in the direction to get on. So right. I express it from a standpoint of view before I even had a contract, how I was feeling the vibe from Cold Chillin' One. Okay. And we ain't even get to the Marley Mall and the eh, 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 that. The, that mesmerizing beat that you can play 50 million times. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning for me. Right. So there's a couple of questions, and then we're going to go back into some storytelling and educating everybody in the building. Uh, we got Virginia in the building, Queens in the building, Strong Island in the building. Um, I mean, a couple of places. I can't remember everybody. Atlanta in the building, Super Lover C, Casting Over Road in the chat. Oh, okay. Them. Shout out to Super. Um, so Armand Davis has a question, Unc, and this is for you. And the reason why I call him Unc, because he's my uncle. Uncle Ty is my uncle. All right. As family, that's yeah, that's why I call him Unc. So he says, What are your fondest memories of Bismarcky and Sean and Roxanne Shante, Unc? Okay, different times. You know, uh, Roxanne Shante is like my daughter, mm -hmm. you know, still is till today. Um, her son and my children are, are best of friends. They still know each other, hang out with each other. That's my daughter, you know. Mm. My fa my fondest memories of Shante, um, is how well God, I got to put Shante and Shan together in a group. Okay. Because when I was on, understand when I was on the road with them, that wild ass MC Shan you see now was the same wild kid. <laughs> okay, but Sh Shante was younger than him, but she could manipulate him. Right, and I called the two of them "Let's and Go," because the one <laughs> say "Let's," the other one say "Go." <laughs> so I had a girlfriend in Georgia. All right, and um, we were at this hotel, a Stouffer's. It was in the middle of nowhere, but it was huge. It had stores and everything in it. So me, Magic, and Marley had to go do radio. Mm -hmm. Shantae is 15 at the time. So I leave her with my friend. So we go take care of the radio. We had to do it. We, we did. When I say do radio, back then, every time we went to, I would get an air shift. So we had to do the air shift. We come back. So I asked the girl, where's Shantae? She said, oh, she went shopping. So I'm thinking she went downstairs in the mall. Hour or so go by. So I was telling Shante so hold on. She said, Well, the mall is like 40 minutes away from here. So how she get there? She said, I gave her my car. <laughs> Mind you, I just taught Shante how to drive that morning in the parking lot. Crazy. <laughs> I'm like, what? You get you gave her your car. Then she says, Well, that guy is with her. I said, What guy? I think his name is Sean or Shan. You gave Shante and Shan your car. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, they crashed the car, ran off of the ditch, then crashed, ran in the ditch. A farmer had to actually use his plow to pull him out. Wow. So that was that was I was upset at the time, but then the, the day, it's a funny story. Right. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they, they were okay. But now biz, the biz story is at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because you know, I mean, everybody knows the story about how he was in Marley's hallway. But there's another story. See, y'all getting the jewels. Y'all getting the jewels. Everywhere back then, you could go on tour. So you could go to a tour and walk from Philly to New York in one day. We used to do four or five shows a day. Right, right, right. Because they had so many clubs that uh -huh. you could you could do in New You could be on tour in New York. You yeah, could do Luke Roxy, Luke you could do the fun like that, right? Luke Skywalker, when he had that plane, we could knock out three of <coughs> and this, right? Right, right, right. And we, yeah. Yeah, we, we, 
we had a private plan to do it. But anyway, mm -hmm. in New York, we, we would go, we, we might start and do Philly in the afternoon, then uh, the Zanzibar about 10 o'clock, come into the Bronx, do the fever, wow. come downtown, do the Broadway International in Harlem. And when we was, once we got every club we go to, we see biz. We start thinking it was more than one biz. <laughs> and we didn't know him, but we knew his name. Why we know his name? Because he had biz on his hat. Right. right. So everywhere we go, you see that guy biz again? Yeah, I see him. And then after a while, when he went to Molly's, he found his way to Molly's project, Queensbridge. And we seen him. Then the next time we seen him in the, on those shows, he's begging me to let him get on. Mm. And I would say no. Nah, man, nah. Because I first of all, I believe Magic had this saying that said, persistence overcomes resistance. Right. And I applied that to everybody. How persistent are you? Do you really want to do this? I ain't got time to play no games with you because you think it's something funny or something fun to do, you know? And Biz was persistent. Yeah. Right. Biz was persistent. Yeah, it's amazing. All right. right. Until I said, okay, his first show, he was Shan's beatbox at Coney Island. Mm. And so that's how he came in with us. He was Shan's beatbox. Oh, he started with Shan, not Roxanne. He started with Shan, yeah. Okay. He started with Shan. And then he brought his man, TJ Swan. Yes, and Swan, right, and, right. And Swan was saying this music, um, right. Jimmy Mathis songs while Biz did the beat. And it was right. something because Jimmy Mathis was black, but he sung white songs. But when, when he did it with the with the with the with, with the beat, when Swan did it with the beat, it just came off. So right. then all three of them they had routines they would do. Shan, Biz, and Swan. You know, and but Biz was once, once again. Well, so as was Kane, because anybody that came to me, I always said no. Mm. Because let me remind you, Tyrone Williams wanted to be a news correspondent. Mm. That's what I wanted to do. And I was trying to get away from everybody. All right. Hip hop to me, it was like my fun time. That's what I did. That's what I did as for fun. That's how I partied. You understand? But what I wanted to do was new. Mm -hmm. But I was in the rap attack and I was just, it's, it's like I couldn't get away. And then we kept growing and growing and growing, you know. Right. And then before you knew, we had Mr. Magic Enterprises oh, wow. with Molly Ma, with Molly Ma Production, I mean, Molly Ma Publishing, and Fly Time Management, and RK Limo, and Hurricane Travel. We had anything we just had to spend money on. We created the company. Mm. So we made money on whatever we had to spend money on. You know. But yeah, so uh and artists were coming up every day, it seemed like. Every time you turn around, it was somebody new. And I mean, with skill. You right. understand what I'm saying? I mean, I listen, yeah. I was next door to sleeping bag. Cold chilling was next. We started cold chilling, by the way, because we have we 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 tested our how to make records? We had a label called Bridge Records, mm -hmm. and we put the bridge on it, and we got jerked <laughs> because we didn't we didn't know that we didn't know the distribution game, right. the manufacturing game. The manufacturers charged us a dollar twenty a unit, all right, and the distributors are telling us they ain't selling nothing. But meanwhile, the bridge is everywhere, so yeah. they they paid us, but they didn't pay us, right. All right. So we got another question, on Not to yeah. cut your wisdom, but we got another question. Um, where is it at? So, uh, PMD, we got one. We've got a couple for PMD, but we had another one for you. Let me just find it real quick. Uh, but they was asking about um, what record was this? It was a Bismarck. Okay, here it is. This is the question. The original version of Rhyming with the Biz had the duo Frick and Frack from Southside Queens on it. Any reason on why they were no longer on the final version? Did you ever hear the first version of Rhyming with the Biz? Or was that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we did that. Listen, Frick and Frack was down with Shan. See, okay. what you got to understand, this is all the time. Shan was king. Just understand it. Shan was king at the time. 
Everybody else was coming in under him. Freaking Frack was down with Shan. All right. When by Biz being his beatbox, Biz met freaking Frack. All right. And Marley, one thing about Marley, he was always doing some shit in the studio. So he recorded Shan, freaking Frack, and Biz with that rhyming with Biz. All right. Mm -hmm. But then, this is, and this is all before I have a deal with Warner Brothers. Wow. All right, when, when when we make the deal with Warner Brothers, take Shan off that. I took Shan off that. Okay. Quick and Frack was still on that. Now with Biz, Biz got to make the music. Um, and he's rising. So now he wants it to be, I'm sorry, Kane wants it to be with Biz and school. So that was a Kane suggestion. Mm, mm, to take them off? Yeah, he, he he wasn't down with it. Okay, okay. Not so, and not to say that he wasn't down and liked him, but he wanted to do it with 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 who his crew who he started with back in the day. Makes sense. It makes sense. So PMD, I thank y'all for yo get y'all questions ready. Hit that super chat. Help us build this thing up. Um, we got we got some questions for um PMD real quick. Unk. Um, yeah, PMD. Sure. Um, the question was, was there a version of Total Chaos with Eric Sermon for the solo that was on Rap Attack show before, or was it a freestyle? That's a question from Doom Mega. <clears throat> you can read it for yourself. I might have messed yeah, it up. Question, right. shout, out to, shout out to Sherelle, Larry Sate, uh, Def Rocker, Les Charles. When you're ready, P, just jump right on in. Yeah, no, that had to be a freestyle because Total Total Chaos is a whole song on Unfinished Business, as you know. So, okay. Uh -huh. um, then there was another question for PMD. And then I got a couple of questions for y'all fellas about a uh, question. Okay. Shout out, guy. This is major. Right. So question to PMD. Is there any unreleased songs out there with NWA and EPMD. Any unreleased? Wow, that's a great question. Because y'all was in, because didn't y'all do, what record did y'all do that they was in the video? Big Payback. The Big Shot Payback, the right? right. And, and the what Big you, was from uh, California. So that's how we end up over there in California. Okay. And, and so did y'all record anything while y'all was out there with them at that time? No, we just shot the video because we had the show. And then, you know, the palace was big at the time. Right. So after that, we actually shot the video, and then you know, Easy E, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, and them showed up just to show the love and the support. Right. That's when everybody was just, you know, that uh, what was that big club out there? I think it was Water in the Bush or Water one of them. Okay. So this is where we all connect. Now, there's a classic picture of you and Tupac. Was that at that same time when when that video was shot out there, or that was another time in LA? But there's a picture. Oh, that was a different time. That time was at the KML. At 106.1, okay. where we did the, uh, you know, the summer jam. So that was in 1992. Right. The NWA was 1989. Okay. So my question to you, Pete, um, you mentioned earlier before that you kind of followed in, you kind of looked at Cold Chilling as as a template. Uh, right. A template, a a a roadmap. Mm -hmm. um, and you were very successful with your own label. And and you you wh what was it exactly about what Uncle Todd did that made you say I want to go this route? Was it because you was around Russell and, and 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 did that was was that more of an influence as well too? Oh uh, well, it was more where I came from, the family structure, the people I had behind me, the people who believed in me. So it wasn't like I could lose because I gave up a uh, thirteen year football career and college. Right. Okay. So now once you're coming into the business, you know, my pops, six, three from Marcy projects and stuff, you know, my mother's from, um, uh, Brooklyn as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're giving up your education and things that you invested in for the 18 years of your life, they're watching you close because now it's on you. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's more than just dropping the rhyme. It's more than just doing the show. You have to have answers because you gave up something for something that you think you can achieve. So the rapping part that I had, because I was a part of hip hop, you know, my brother was involved in it back in 84 and 85. Now right. the business I had to watch because it wasn't like I could just put my business in anybody's hand because I had people I had to answer to. 
So right. at that time, I was fortunate enough for a sleeping bag to be downstairs. You remember the diner that was downstairs. So anytime you took care of business after leaving there, you got your eat on. But it's kind of interesting being here on this platform to realize how when Fly Ty started to move to make something happen, like he said, he wanted to do news correspondent. Right. Mine's is kind of different where I just was doing hip hop and I was working on something, but I built something just as big. But the beauty of this, when you look at the Juice crew, that's really the first crew in hip hop mm -hmm. from our era, okay? Right. And you, right. got the, you got the MC Shan with the bridge. You got the Big Daddy Kane. Now we go with Bismarck. You got to understand, Biz is from Brentwood. Bismarck used, took us under our wing. Anybody from Brentwood knows the McDonald's used to have the old IHOP right next to it. To it. That right. is the business. Flat I don't know nothing about that. Flat right. I don't know nothing about Brentwood so like that. You have to go in there and sit yeah, down. Dude. Like, like Ty would say, Biz was always with that movement and always on point. So the first thing, story I like to share, is when he told us uh, he played the beat for Ain't No Half Step Man before he gave it to Kane. But you know, we were speeding and we was moving. You know how we was moving, Jay. Right. So next thing you know, Biz, he's like, mm, okay. Next thing you know, we hit. Mm, mm, mm. But the reality is, only Kane can rep that like the way he repped it. Even if Biz gave right. us that, we wouldn't have been able to do what Big Daddy Kane did on that. Right. But to take it farther, Biz was the one who used to hook the three shows. Now I kind of see where he got it from. Where we'd be on the 125th, rocking in the high school. Then go to the rooftop. Okay, this is the early part. As soon as we get in the rooftop, a sneaker got stepped on. That's how our night started. And you know back <laughs> in the day, when you step on the sneaker. Right. But again, you know, just the power in the group and the respect for the group. It kind of turned into, you know, yo, we're here to see the show. And it's always been there like that. So I want to just put that out there because Biz, who wasn't even a booking agency, used to book us for three shows a night. And he would be there. We walk into school, be like, Biz, where's the stage? We're standing on tables, performing, rocking with a packed house. Mm -hmm. so we get the inspiration from the Juice Crew, Molly Ma, Mr. Magic, you know, from the production standpoint of view. And then back from the business, you had to stay on top of the business because if you didn't stay on top of the business, then you could just get a phone call, like, you know, cool, you, know yes. you know? Yeah, that's that's now, I, I want to follow up before I forget, all right? I'm something on. that that you said um, about the family and the business and all that. Anyway, in 1984, the rap attack was hot. We're getting like 30 share, which is incredible. Getting like 30 what? 30 share or Arbitron. What's mm -hmm. that mean? Um, well, dude, that's how they rate you, how, how they charge the commercials on your show. So you understand how it was. If Don Imus or Howard Stern got a 10 share, they had a big party. Mm. Magic was getting 30. Wow. 30. All right. So we go in August 1984 to renegotiate. Um, we hired a lawyer. Bill Kraslowski was his name. So when we get there, me, Magic, and Marley, he's already been inside with the general manager. We walk in, they got big smiles on their face. Magic, we're going to put you on every day. Marley, we got this new girl, Mary Thomas. She's on. We go. We want you to do the lunchtime mix with her. And Ty, you know you are, are always wanted to do news. We're gonna give you your own sports show on LIB, and we're gonna make you full time. Uh, uh, give you a, a news show in addition. But no more rap. What? Wow. But no more rap. And Magic says, no more rap. What about Curtis Blow? Because these are the guys who was Juice Crew at the time. What about Curtis Blow? Oh, so what Curtis Blow was Juice Crew too? That's the initial Juice Crew. The yeah, and I, gotta, I didn't bring him up with the King Tim and, you know, the Rapper's Delight. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, these are the breaks and the Christmas rap. When the Christmas rap came out, that was the year I got my turntables, my speakers, and the whole DJ set. So he says, what about Curtis Blow? What about Flash? What about the Fat Boys? They were Juice Crew, too. Right. What about Houdini? I was Juice Crew, too, at that time. Um, and the general manager says, listen, the major labels are giving us trouble. 
They don't know what to do with this rap stuff. And Magic, everybody listens to you. If you stop playing it, the kids will think it's over and dead. So three youngsters that we were, rebellious, we make a decision to say, fuck you, and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> All right? We walk out. Now, they did not dislike us. They liked us. They saw potential in us. They saw a future for us. So by the time I get home, they don't call my grandmother, my girl, Magic's mother, his wife, Molly's mother. So we get home. Everybody, are you crazy? They're giving you the opportunity of a lifetime. And you want to give it all the way for that hippity hoppity shit? We went back to WHBI to save hip hop. That's a story in hip hop that nobody knows. Mm. Mr. Magic saved hip hop. Wow. Straight up. Put he did some Muhammad Ali put his career on the line. Right. For it. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I mean, worst come to worst, I was a I was a Howard University graduate. I had computer skills. I could always get a job. But Magic said no. And we said no because he said no. Right. And people need to understand what Mr. Magic did to sacrifice for what he felt was his baby. Because mm -hmm. he was the first one to put that in the broadcast arena. Right. All right. Magic, look, Magic, when, when, when Kiss hired Red Alert, the happiest person was Magic. In his oh, mind, he forced Kiss to go hip hop. Because mm. Barry Mayo was the PD and he said he would never play rap. So when he hired Red Alert, Magic was, yo, child, they got a kid Red Alert. And guess what? He from the Bronx. Mm. Uh -huh. He loved that. He loved the fact that he loved the awesome too. He loved what's the half pint in them. Because in his mind, now we spreading this everywhere. And, right. and, and I know I'm going, I went over on a tangent, but I just no, 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 because no, you dropped it. Go ahead, huh? you used to say, Fly. No, he used to say, you remember, you used to end it and something be yourself or find yourself. Try by find yourself. yourself. Right. People used to hang on to those words because it just made too much sense. Right. He only had one hour to catch him when he first started. Right. So this is, this is real combo. So, yeah. so, so, um, I want to get back to Big Daddy Kane. We want a little talk about. Big Daddy Kane, you in Paris, right? So, P, what was your favorite song from Kane, man? Oh, man. Kane, uh, boom. The first one he did with this, that one with the intro when he was um, special guest. Right. You know, Rhyming with Biz. Rhyming with Biz. Biz. That yeah. one, naturally, that one played at that. That's when I was in the 68 Camel. Okay. Right. And then uh, set it off. You know, even we just did a show two weeks ago. I was on the ad libs on the low backstage and stuff because it's just that's what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, raw, right? right. You know, dee, 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 you, know. Yeah. you know, when you yeah. know, you're a student and you're still a fan, this is how it is because you know, Kane is dialed in right now, not only from the rapping standpoint and the music standpoint of view, just the overall structure of us coming from the golden era and reapproaching right. this and making sure we understand you know, who we are and what type of contributions that we actually made to the game. Right. As long as you stay a student, you can always grow. Now, if you made a contribution, can you imagine what Mr. Magic and Fly Time made? Yeah. <laughs> that's why I said, you know, right. it's good to have when you have older leadership there, then you can right. just cool. It's kind of like being on the runs out <clears throat> when you didn't have to do nothing. You know, so, you know, as you get, as you go get more sophisticated, in the in, in in the music industry at that point, you understand it ain't easy to get on the radio. No, it was not easy. You know, radio have what they call record day. Hmm. Every Wednesday, all around the country, every record station had a record day when you could go and sit down with the music department and pitch your record. 
Mm. Some people can't even get it in. When you get to the lobby, it's packed wow. with people in their records. And everybody don't get in. Right. And then you get in and understand this. I don't care what kind of format the record the radio station got. It's still the top 40 stations. Probably the top 40 joints. But they only play 40 records. All right. Really the top 20. Then they have what they call classics, which is goes by itself. You understand that? That's what it yeah. Then they have what they call recurrence. Recurrence are records that came out two, three months ago, but they still got life. Right. All right. So, and then each major had a slot. So it was six majors. So they had a they could put whoever they want in there. You know, they could put Michael Jackson, Madonna, whoever, whoever they want to in their slot, Prince, they could put it in there. All right. The only rapper I was saw with a slot ever was MC Shane. He had a slot at BLS. Whatever Shane made, they put it in. But the the bottom line is you only get one or two records to put in new a week. Right. That's the, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's how come it was so hard to get on the radio. Right. So now you got somebody like Mr. If you rap, hip hop, you got Mr. Magic, Red Alert, Half Fight, Awesome too. Mm -hmm. That's a whole new arena. Right. For that. And they're going to play your stuff. Right. right. They're right. going to play it. So, um, I, I want to I wanna tap into the, the episode because there was a few gems that you dropped True. in the episode. So one gem you dropped in the episode was at some point you wanted Kane to battle Run from Run DMC. Yeah. How did that happen and, and can you tell that story? Well, first of all, Kane got dementia or some shit. Because <laughs> he just remembers it totally different. Really? He think it was with Hurricane. Nigga, I wouldn't have had you battling Hurricane. Okay. <laughs> I like her game, but she that one but Run and Russell were in front of the Apollo with me and Kane. Kane was unknown. Okay. All so right. this is before any records, he was just with you. He was like I said, I don't know if I tried to go around the city battling mm -hmm. people with Kane. Mm -hmm. So I used to keep Kane with me wherever I went, like like a pistol. <laughs> that like nobody no, no, straight up, like nobody knew what was about to happen. Right. You know? And we're in front of the Apollo, and it's a lot of people. And Kane is itching. You can see it in him. Please, Todd. Please let me get this nigga. <laughs> you know? But I wouldn't do it because I was so close to Joey. Joey used to ride in the juice mobile with me and Magic when he was the son of Curtis Blow, before he was even run DMC. Mm -hmm. All That's right. right. Yeah. So I knew him from a, a young kid, and I just could, I know what Kane gonna do there. I already know. You know, it's like you know somebody could fight real good, and you're like, no, nah. right? <laughs> nah, nah. Don't even do this to him, please. This is my little man. So, you so yeah, that was that story with Kane. You know, I wouldn't let him take or do run DMC like that. Mm. So yeah. what? So what was your favorite Kane record? Ty, and what was your friend Raw Kane album? My, Raw and Long Live the Kane. Raw and Long, and what was yours, P? Because well, let me just the Raw say Raw because Raw established who he was. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Raw now, established that a, a promo record before the album came out, right? Huh? Was Raw like a promo record before the album came out? Well, no, there was Raw. Well, that's before we had the Raw was before I had a deal. There was no album. Okay. I was putting that the only album I put out. See, when you have an independent label, man, you can't just put out records willy nilly. <laughs> like <I would> <laughs> because every record you press costs money. Right. right. All right. Uh -huh. So you, you can't be just you can't commit to an album. Got you. Because that costs a lot of money. And that's how it started. You start with a single, then if the single did well, the record right. the single gave you the money for the album. That's right, how we it. right, Ty. Exactly. Wow. That's crazy. Right. So you know, so but uh, after we did Raw, Warner Brothers approached me. They they sent Benny Medina to find me mm. because Shan. At this point, Shan is all over the, the trades. He's all over the fanzines. 
He's videos everywhere. And they missed out on Def Jam earlier. All right, they missed out on the deal with Def Jam. I think Russell went to Def Jam first. I mean, went to Warner Brothers first. Mm -hmm. And um, one of us turned him down. So now I guess they didn't want to miss on the next one. And they sent Benny Medina to find me. He, right. he couldn't find me, but he found Lior. Mm. And Lior brought him to my house in Flatbush. And you know, when, when they told, when they want, offered me a deal, I said, no, thank you. Because I was fine being independent. Right. You know, and, and, and something about where I come from, Bedford Stuyvesant, independent was a big, good word to me. Right. Everybody yeah. want independence. You know, so, yeah. and, and masters, I mean, major sounded too much like master. Right. So I was not that. Uh -huh. You know. Uh, they kept calling me, calling me, you know. Then the chairman of the company called me, asked me to come out there, just to come check it out. And I took my partner, Lenny, out there. We went out there. And I'll never forget, we sitting at this conference table with all their senior VPs. They're trying to smooth me. You know, and the the business affairs guy says, well, we're going to give you 40 points. No one's ever gotten 40 points before. And I said, 40 points. Do you mean 40 percent? He said, yes. I said, well, I get 100 percent then. Why would I give you 60 percent of what I'm getting? And I got up and started walking out. And then they're making me this. Crazy deal. I don't know if they ever gave a deal me that right you now. couldn't refuse. The deal that you couldn't refuse. They gave me a deal where I well whether I sold a record or not, I was gonna get paid. Right. So and see, at that time, um, this is what I love about your business acronym, and this is why mm -hmm. I love PMD because it's great to have two of y'all as mentors that I could go to when it's as far as business. But I love the fact that when you told me the story about you signing the deal and you said if they made a dollar, I made a dollar. We made money at the same time. Right. That deal was kind of unheard of at that yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, not not just that. They had to pay me to be that. But check this out. Because no. I want to say this. Everyone talks about the deal that Baby signed with, with Universal and how his deal was so extraordinary. But right. this is decades before, before. Baby Cash Money. Well, you know, you know I, I was, I used to love, LL, I used to love LL, young LL. Mm-hmm. And I used to preach to him every time I had a chance. And, and he was always the inquisitive type that would sit like a little and just look and listen and absorb. So I love talking to him. And I told him one thing to always remember. And I said, the most important thing you have as a black man in this game is the ability to say no. Because when you say no, they don't think you saying no because of your ethics. They think you saying no because somebody offering you a better deal somewhere. Wow. So as a black man, the be biggest, best thing you could have is say no. Right. No, no thank you. They're gonna come. They're gonna come. And they, so you know, a lot of, uh, and like a lot of artists, not artists complain about they got, like we talked about, they got jerked. It's because they didn't say no. They were afraid to say no. They signed anything. Standard contracts, my brothers. Back then, everybody had the same contract. Hmm. Whether you went to Profile or Sugar Hill or Tommy Boy, three or four points, that's it. All right. It's funny you so made my the contract. I don't mean to cut you off, but it's a good segue because P told me at one time, he said, his contract was a bad contract, his original contract. He had mentioned that before. And, and, and so you're saying that was standard between? That was standard. You couldn't I mean, get a better I mean, one anywhere you went. If you, didn't, if you didn't take it, then you were stuck where you was at. Right. And if you did take it, then you could move forward. Perfect example. Even though the contract was bad, we still had you guys to chill, still put us on the Runs House tour, still had a number one black album on the Billboard chart, so it put us in the arena to move forward. Where the, by the time we got to where we go in that contract was irrelevant, even mm -hmm. though it was. Oh, see, back then contracts were slanted in the favor of the record company. 
because record companies from the 50s and 60s, even the 40s, their attitude was, we making you, we giving you the ability to do those tours. If we don't put your record out, you don't do those tours. Right. And, we, and we're and we not collecting from those tours, so we should get the most money from the sale of the record. That was their attitude. You mm -hmm. know? And they gave people three or four points. Five. If you got five points, Yo, you was yeah. large. You was doing it. You was doing it. And that's mm -hmm. just the... And, and, but my point was why people... When I hear people say, well, we didn't know we were signing. If you had a fifth grade education, nigga, you could read that. Right. There wasn't no Greek in those contracts. There's regular everyday English words. Nothing right. difficult about it. But most people did the only thing you wanted, and, I, and it's understood. You said exactly right, the only thing you wanted, right. Nobody had time to look at that paper. You wanted to get on. You wanted to get on. Boom. Right. You that time you it. It right there, right. So and then after, after the times you got right. on. You know, when they start giving out advances, you just wanted to check. Right. Whatever it you took to get the check. One hour on either Magic or Red Alert. Right, right. You had one you, hour. You wanted, you you wanted to be, seven you wanted to be down. Mm -hmm. You know, so whatever, you know, you want, you would sign with whoever. It didn't have, it didn't have to be a big label. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it was only they had to promise you. But they was gonna get you out on, and what you thought out was on the radio. Mm. Mm. You hear yourself on the radio, you was happy. That was now. Tell me this, so, um, I know me and you talk a lot off off camera, but I asked you about the Mr. Magic rap attack, and I said if he played it, Mr. Magic had three ways he played your music. If it said world premiere, go ahead, break that down. Okay, world. He did this. That's is why Magic played everybody's stuff. World premiere, man. He, world premiere really meant to be honest with you. You were somebody close to him. Mm. You're well, gonna be Curtis Blow or feeling it, Jay. The world, world premiere, right? Word. But the but the or it was it was really a hot song. Okay. You know, so the show by Dougie Fresh type hot. Right. That's gonna be a world premiere. Then he had the second level, where in his in his mind it was pretty good. It could go, could be a big record, but might not. He called those super blasts. Mm. This is a oh, Mr. Mr. Man. Magic Magic Super Blast. Then the third level was ones that he didn't he didn't think was going to be that good, but he was going to give you a shot because mm. what he always used to say is, "Ty, can nobody pick a hit?" He said, "If you could, we could pick hits. That could be our job, right? Just telling record company that's it, right? <laughs> you know, right? You know, so." We got to give everybody a shot. So the way he would do that, he would do make it or break it. Mm. My, yo, my sister and mom still talk about that to this day. You know. Yeah, so I just, I'll make it or break it. But when I got home, I was kind of cocky with it. So they were playing games and told right. me that situation got broke. But then after I, you know, calmed it down a little, make it or break it was a big part of that too. Right. So make it or break it meant you let the audience decide. Yes. Right. Right. You know, and, and if, 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 if they... If, and, and everything about the make it or break it was good because it was either going to be funny because we would let the, the, the audience talk on the air if, 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 if it didn't make it. Right. You know, and, and, you know, everybody go, oh, that was whack. And, you know, they'd be laughing about it. So that was fun. If it was good. People were going to say, yo, that's, that's dope. Wow. Mm -hmm. Who is that? You know, that sort of thing. So we had Magic had three different ways to play a record. You know, but the, the main thing, that, the, the important thing I want to get out of that is he, there was never a time he wouldn't play your record. Mm. Ever. Unless it Ever. was whack. Nah, it was whack. He doing make it or break it. Mm. Listen, I have this. Hold listen. up, hold up, because then that goes to the whole public enemy thing. He didn't like the record with public No, that's not true. Okay, well, you got to clear that up. Russell right? Simmons came to me and said. Oh, this is good. Russell Simmons said, came to me. <laughs> said, 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 Ty. I got this group, Public Enemy, man. I don't know if he said Hank Shockley or, or once Bill Stephanie, one of them Long Island cats. He said they gave me this whack ass group called Original Concept. CBS gonna drop me. It didn't sell. I need to do something with this Public Enemy. Magic got to play it. But at the time, we was doing radio wars between us and Kiss. 
African Magic and Red and Chuck. So I said to uh, Russell, I said, I'm going to tell you right now, we play it don't mean we're going to break it. Because breaking a record means making it a hit. Mm -hmm. Because BLS, remember with BLS, we, we don't came back to BLS. We got better stuff, but the rest of the station ain't really in the hip hop. You know, BLS was always that sophisticated, distinguished station. So their mindset that we played it, it didn't mean they was going to play it. But if Kiss played it, if Red and Chuck played it, Kiss might add it. Mm -hmm. So Magic said to Russell, yeah, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to break the shit on the air, and Red and Chuck and them going to be mad at us, and then you could go over there and diss us to Red and Chuck and them, and they'll play it. Mm. And that's what happened. That was a favor to Russell. Wow. See, I never that heard was, that story. Uh -huh. That was a favor to Russell. It wasn't nothing that mattered to him really didn't like the record. He loved that. How could you not like that track? Right. That shit was the shit. Right. So <laughs> you know, I got, I got, that, was, that was one of the things you put the as soon as you put the needle down. So I got a question. I got a question for Parrish about Big Daddy Kane. So what do you think that made Big Daddy Kane work? Parish, what as as an artist, right? As an artist that's in competition, mm -hmm. with, so what do you think from your perspective? What do you think made it work? And then, Unc, from your perspective, what do you think made Big Daddy Kane work? Go ahead, P. I just think uh, Kane was who he said he was. You know, and he was a real lyricist who was around the right camp. You know, he was in that kind of camp, like the camp that we have. When you got a camp that got so many superstars. Then when you're the last one coming in, you're absorbing all of that. And then when you get your chance to let off, you don't have the pressure of the first guys who had to actually trailblaze. Mm. So I, you understand what I'm saying? So I was there with me, Kane, Twin Height. We were riding in regular school buses to Rochester from Manhattan on regular bus, no tour bus. Mm. Right? You know, so we was like, yo, I guess this is part of it. So we'd hop on a bus in Manhattan, ride, go do the show. But the whole point was every time it was time to deliver, Kane delivered on that level, you know? So even us in the EPMD days back in, oh man, Detroit, come on, man. Joe Lewis Arena sold out, just that crazy energy. You know, his two guys who are still with him, you know these infamous stories. Me and E thinking, yeah, we think we're ready. Yo, wh why are we going on before Kane? These are real stories. Right. You know? And we get there to Detroit. Everybody air to the street. Kane's like, okay, yeah, let him. Yeah, I'll go on first. So EPMD switches up the order. We go out there immediately. We know we're in trouble. Right. You know, because yeah. Kane, when he comes, it's, you know, we hip hop and we do what we do on a major level. But when Kane is out there with the Speedos and the Jacuzzi and two of the best dancers and, and three of the hottest songs out there, plus the Bismarck factor. So he didn't just come in like and had to figure it out. Right. You know I mean? He had Custom Auto, right? Then he has Bismarck, who forget about it. Bismarck really walked us through. Like, when we did our work. And in fact, Biz was supposed to produce our first album. But then things went the way it went. And then I yeah, wanted to. V mentioned that to me. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I used to be out there a lot. So again, Biz was beyond the real deal. Even mm -hmm. before he passed. Anytime I ran into Biz, it was like running into Professor that you know if you didn't do your homework, you better have a good excuse. Because he knew what he was talking about. And he just loved hip hop like that. Right. So when we talk about Big Daddy Kane, Big Daddy Kane comes from that. So when you roar, even today when we hear roar, whether we're in a stadium or venue, it still resonates the same. Right. Okay? You know, he, Kane has big records. So as a solo artist, and even the stuff we're going through in hip-hop today, he's one of the ones in the front. Like, yo, we got to tighten our shit up. Right. So what? what is your... what? Why do you think Kane worked, Unc? Why do you think he worked at that okay, time? Okay, well, let me just say this to you. Prior to Kane and them going on tour alone, was kind of tantamount to your child going on his own. Mm -hmm. Because I always kept the juice cool together. We were the Mr. Magic World Tour. And if we got, we would get on the new edition tour and do a few dates with them or the Def Jam tour, do some dates with them or Fresh Fresh, whatever they called it, or the Budweiser Super Fest. But we always did our show where it was like a big show 
you know, with everybody. Shante, Shan, Kane, Biff, TJ Swan. All right. Mr. Magic, he's the host. And it gave the feel of like when we had skits and you know, I was a stickler on the stage and, and performing. We had rehearsals. You understand? So Kane came right at the end of that. You know, when we were doing doing our show as, as one big unit. Because that way we could get 45 minutes, you know, because we got all those acts. And my thing was, okay, we I didn't care when we went on. Because that was always my determination. I didn't care if we go on first. You just hope I hope they're able to follow. Mm -hmm. That's how I talk to them. We got to be so good that they don't want to come on behind us. You know, mm -hmm. so Kane, all right, uh, was it was a change. Shan, Shan was a change from the old hip hop, from the rock. Mm. His whole flow was different from me. All right, that's what people don't understand about Shan. He came, he had an easier flow to the Melly Mel or Cool Mo D. His flow just rode the beat. Mm. Kane came along and flipped that. Right. All right. Rode it differently. His words, uh, his metaphors, you know, were just incredible. You know, Cool G Rap, who probably was my favorite rapper. Yo. All right. Based on uh, what he could do with word play. All right. However, so you telling me you like Cool G Rap better than Big Daddy Kane? Yeah. Yeah. What? I liked him. I, I liked his songs. So you like Cool G Rap songs better than Cool Kane? G Rap has so many. Cool G Rap has so many monsters. You know, Koji okay. rap just with his meta, his metaphors, all right. But the dip, but but Kane's show was much better than G Rap's. And Kane, G Rap, he had too many lyrics in his songs. So let me ask you this question. And I'm not starting no beef, um, but on a scale of one to ten, and you 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 gotta pick where they at, Koji rap. On a scale of one to ten, Big Daddy came on a scale of one to ten. Ten. For who? Both of them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Word. Right. Ten. But as you're explaining it, you're seeing the way it happened. But see, what you're saying to me is you like. You asked me what I liked. You didn't ask me how nice they were. Right. I like. Okay, that. so how nice they were, you think. Kooji rap was nicer than Kane lyrically. You asked me who no nice, they on the same level, but you asked okay. me who I liked. Mm. Okay, so you, you a different prefer, question. Uh -huh. so you prefer you prefer Kooji rap music. G rap has listen, when I told you I rap, I you know what I'm saying. Listen, I used to stay on the block selling cooked up rock. When he busted <laughs> out my sock, because I really would clock. Mm. Were all kind of things, slinging jackets and jeans, mm. magazines, anything just to hustle my beans. Cash was flowing fast. Money grew like grass. People hungry for the blast that don't even last. Didn't so want to be involved, but excuse me. When you heard that record, you knew that was out of here? Out of here. No, that's forget terrible. that. That's when I heard Demo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a demo, right? See, forget about it. You go and get Road to the Riches. You got, <laughs> yo, boom, boom. Yeah, wow. shout out to DJ Polo, too. Right. Yeah, shout out to DJ that Polo. Was Shan, yeah, that was Shan Polo. That was that. And then they opened it up. And, and right. This, then once they opened it up, they gave the platform. Right. Kind of like the Run DMC bought us on the Runs House tour and gave us that platform. You you know what I, what I really love, all jokes aside, and I've heard this from a lot of performers, a lot of rap performers, that I had the rappers rather. Mm -hmm. I had rappers that other rappers liked. Right. You know, that's this is what I was told, you know. And you gotta understand, think about it. One time as well as a manager, I had Rock Kim, I had Kane, I had G. Wow. I had Shane. So like G, Rock Kim, and Kane on a lot of people's top five. Right. Mm -hmm. Right now. Yeah. Still. You know, so the just just the fourth to be so fortunate to run that type of talent. You know, I mean, when Eric came and told me, I got this kid named Rock Kim from Long Island, Ty. I want to put a record. I need Marley to help me produce it. 
Who came to you? Eric. Eric, uh, used, to, uh, Eric used to be the security guard at BLS. Eric B. Yeah. Eric okay. Barrier, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That yes, yes. He was the security guard at the front desk after five o'clock. But he was also Marley's boy. Right. All right. And he's he was also Magic's wife's security. Mm. But we used to get parties all the time every weekend. And Eric B's job was to watch Lisa. All right. But Eric was was like Eric was like a little brother to me. Mm. And, and he so said wanted, Okay, sorry, not to cut you off. Sorry. You know, and after they did it, I, he wanted a deal. I went to Jerry Bloodrock. Jerry Bloodrock had reality records. Mm. And Jerry Bloodrock would sign anybody, really all labels would sign anybody I asked, especially Jerry. But Jerry would always ask me, are they good? Right. Uh, and I'm going to tell him, if I say, man, nah, he says, so if I press a thousand records to start, you okay with that? Yes. So he asked about Rakim, is he good? I said, yo, this is going to be out of here. He said, then I can't sign it because I got Dougie. I got Rockmaster Scott in the Dynamic 3, and I got Divine Sounds. And that's already taken a bunch of my time. But my man, as Zakia, I said, is he going to look out for Eric? So he's going to look out for him. And I said, and they, that's how they got their deal. Because remember, at this time, I don't have no label. I'm radio. You still and doing radio at this time? Still doing radio and management. Mm -hmm. You know, but no, no record label, you know. But you yeah, so, so not to cut you off, but yo, it's kind of like so. Basically, at this time when we still was teenagers, you had Bismarck, Big Daddy Kane, Roxanne Shantae um, was your, bugs not out to here. cut your wisdom, Pete. That, um, can you put your camera in the middle because you're getting halfway cut off? Mm -hmm. other, way, other way, there we go. We need the there we go. The whole time, not half of them. Ah, yeah, okay, it's that, that, Ill because that, now, Todd, you, you look at the way you was receiving it. So the way the music was coming, MC Shan, Bismarck, Big Daddy Kane, Craig G, Master Ace, and Roxanne Shantae. We used to have this club out there called uh, Les Jardins, mm -hmm. Long Island. And that's where you, when you was just a new hip hopper, if you got the opportunity to get let out the house, that was the club you went to. And right. I went to some of those shows, because don't forget the Roxanne saga. Right. You know, all of those songs. That was big. Yes, big time. Roxanne was big in this country. Yo, so there's about six artists at one time that was coming from, from you. You know, listen. Now, I don't know if you know this, Pete. Me, Russell Simmons, and Andre Harrell was roommates. All right? Oh. We, we all lived in Left Rack City in Queens. All right? Oh, we and can't all... tell this story because this is going to come out on the docuseries. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, they gotta watch the docu series. But we live together, all right. <laughs> and you, Russell, oh, and him, Russell, and Andre Harrell wow, started out in a one studio apartment in, wow. in Left Rock City. Left and, Rock. And what you say, JB? And that's all for today, right? And, yeah. and that's all for that story because well, they got they got yeah, I got you. Yeah, they gotta watch the docu. Well, yeah, that. But you know, the three of us was boys, you know, right. and we met not not college roommates. We met after that, but. The bottom line is, at the same time that we left BLS, me, Magic, and Marley, money stopped coming in. You know how that is. And, and at that time, you get 15% of nothing. Right. That ain't no money. And the highest paid artist is getting 1500 every now and then. Right. You know, so me, Russell, and Andre end up having to move together. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and as a matter of fact, we took which sure my doing okay. We we took Andre's girl's apartment. You know, she moved out. We was there so much, and it was a it was a one room. Oh, brother. We, we got we gonna shift. Look the at the story. sacrifice for hip hop before we got here. The right. story. Right. <laughs> so we gonna. That's move. all right. They'll have to get. What you say? Like I said, I gotta shift the story because this is part of the 13 episode series we coming out about Unk. Oh, we give them away too much. Hey, we yeah. give them away too much. Nah, I just want them to get a little bit so they actually watch the episode. But, but you know, um, when I start talking, you already know the deal. I know that's why I gotta move the yeah, move the conversation yeah. a little bit. So someone had uh, we gotta answer a couple of questions because we got some cool super chats. I want to shout out everybody that um put up the super chats up here. Um, the question is for, and this is for uh, for Unk, 
This is for Armand Davis. What are your fondest memories of Master Ace and the Fat Boys? P, I got something for you, too. Okay. Well, my fondest memory of the Fat Boys once we got to the beginning, when they won the contest. You know, we had the contest at Radio City with Charles Stetler and I believe it was Pepsi. And um, uh, Fat Boys won the rap contest. UTFO won the dance. Oh, wow. This is crazy. Right. Okay. And the Fat Boys, the the, the 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 first prize got a record deal. And UTFO, the first prize for dance, you got to be Houdini's dancers. Mm. That's how they got on, that's how they got in the game. So the Fat Boys, you know, they were always comical, even when they didn't know they were comical. You know what I'm saying? If you sat in the room with them and watched them just interact with each other, even when they were serious, it was funny as hell. Right. They were just funny, you know, and there were young kids mm -hmm. who, who didn't believe what was happening to them, mm -hmm. you know, or didn't think it was going to go to the degree that it went so fast for them. They blew up. They blew up fast. Mm -hmm. Right. When you Curtis Blow and Larry Smith. I mean, uh, Crush Crew. When Curtis Blow and Larry Smith produced their, that Fat Boys record. It wasn't even about the lyrics. It was about the fat boys in that track. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And then, can you feel this? You know? And then they had a good manager oh who said, goodness. I'm going to take advantage of good manager, and he knew how to promote them. I'm going to take advantage of their size. And he made them eat like that. Really? Get fatter. Yeah. Fat boys. You want them fatter. Mm. Fatter than you they know? was already fat? They wasn't, see, it was, it was only Buffy that was really fat. They was husky, but they wasn't like he wanted them. Right. So and then they, but well, he was pushing them to eat, to get fatter, because the fatter they got, the more he could promote them. But Cool Rock, you know, was the first one to start saying, yo, hold up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, I, and, you know, I don't want to say blame nobody for Buffy's death, but, you know, Buffy was like 600 some pounds. Really? Yeah. Wow. You know, and 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 and, and I want to say he gained 300 at least, maybe more. He was he might have been two something at first. He might gain 400 pounds. Wow. You know, and that was all because of greed, and mm -hmm. I don't mean food greed. You mean from the label greed? From the label and the management. Right. Got to make them fat. Let me tell you something. We had this show at the garden. Shante was on with the Fat Boys, uh, Grandmaster Flash of Furious Fire, Run DMC. And Buffy was so, his behind was so big. Shante could put her back next to him, back to back, and jump up on his behind, and she could ride on his behind while he walked. Wow. That's how big he was. Wow. wow. So know, I got. I got to, not to cut your wisdom off. But, 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 but go ahead. let me finish asking the question for the kids. Man. God damn. You want me to cut me off, but you cut me off. <laughs> but now, nah, you know, that, that was just a, a, um, my, my experience with the Fat Boys was from, was from the very beginning. You know, and Master Ace, you know, um, I, 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 I knew his, his mother. Okay. You know, and, um, I was just had he was he, my 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 joy for age. He was my first college kid. He was the first kid I had that I had went to he was in college. He went to the University of Rhode Island. So that was my favorite story about him. The fact that he was a college student. Okay. Now there was a question. I got a whole bunch of more questions for you. Um, so I'm trying to get you, you gotta go somewhere. Excuse me, sir. You gotta go somewhere. No, not right oh, so now. Why are you rushing us? No, I got a couple of people because it's, it's you know I got a couple of people that want want some questions asked. So Parrish, yes. they want to know if you ever battled Eric. That's the question that uh uh I'm trying to figure out who asked that question. Who asked the question that if Eric ever bat if Parrish ever battled Eric before he me answered? nigga let him answer. <laughs> I'll let you take what type of interview, Ty. Oh, yes. Was it now, where were we, Jay? Wait, oh, hold on. Um, the Marquis Marquis asked the question of if Eric 
ever have, have you and Eric ever battled before? No, me, Eric, and I never got the battle because and when Eric and I were working, we was battling putting songs together. So the right. music would show up, and then within the music and wanting to be the best, we would come with our best for the music. But we never got to like yo battle battle, like this is a battle. You know, okay. like in our music, every song we went song for song and tried to come up with the best battling each other. Now, one question I want to ask you while we here, you and you and um. Eric never really did like eight bars and you know, he did 16 and you did 16. Y'all kind of broke it up. Like he might, you might do six, he do six. W what made y'all do that instead of the traditional 16, 16? Because it was all according to the way everything was going. Again, once you put the beat together, you have the production. Once the production's together, you're more, again, you're looking at hip hop. You got Rakim, you got Kane, you got all of these dope MCs, artists, run DMC. And you know what type of songs you got to make for this one world premiere for our All Red Alert. So me and E would just go up in that studio. And then once the track would be done, then it was more or less not trying to sound dopest, but to the ear of the hip hop listener. Like, let's take this my thing for example. MCs out there, you better stand clear. EPMD is a world premiere from New York Straight Talk, America's Best. Cold Wild Long Island is where I rest. I set a bar like this. But then when Eric comes in, his is longer. But mm -hmm. then once we get to the second one, then we even out. So it was, it was more or less what sounded right to the ear at the time. Not trying to fit the format. Well, damn, I need 12. Damn, I need 16. No, MC's out there. You better stand clear. EPMD is a world premiere from New York Straight Talk, America's Best. Kowal Long Island's where I rest. Yeah, I said what I wanted to say. Okay, next. And that's how it went. It's to the Kowal Long Island's where we rest. And it didn't go that way because you know you know how that go. Right. That's where the brick comes. To out. me, to me, EPMG kind of like Run DMC did that. They didn't have matching bars. Mm -hmm. Daryl and Joe didn't have match. They could one could have been long or one could have been short. It didn't matter. All right, it's like I guess you know whoever rhyme fit, you know. Mm -hmm. And and when you look at EPMD, I always felt like EPMD was on that run DMC train going growing and book like they went from they was never whack. They was never not you know what I'm saying they was they was from day one. EPMD just went from being dope to doper. Right. You know, and you know and, and they were at sleeping bag. That was next door to us sleeping bag. Yes, right. Exactly. You With know. the diner downstairs. Right, and Tower Records, the diner, the diner and, downstairs, and Tower what? Records went right across the street. So when you're right across pocket, the street, you go get it. Yeah. You know, but the flip part of that though, the short rhyme can turn into a long rhyme, like Rampage. And again, right. you're having fun for the love of the music, and you're in the studio trying to do the right thing for hip hop. It's a difference when you're on stage, and then it bam, boom, bam, bam, bam. Now we did a, a thousand bars, right? You know, your custom a thousand bars. So what you're saying, we walling. So it, in the studio, when you're putting the rhyme together, you know when it's enough. Now, once you hit the stage, it's, uh, you're supposed to sound like you sound on the record. Right, right. They right. said- EPMD, I just, this, I just, just, I just, just to tell you, EPMD was, to me, mm -hmm. you know, like was always one of my favorite artists. They just were, were different, you know. And, and, and I was just in them tracks, I was like, damn. I just get mad. I didn't get one. I didn't get one. Straight wow. up. Like, Yo, what? Molly. <laughs> What's Yo. going on? Yo. That was the subconscious of hearing the bridge and all of those big records make the right. music. Just riding and riding. And then once we got the opportunity, Jay was there. He saw it. He from I was around. I was around. I was around. Yeah. I was, yeah. You know, you know I, I, I was. Peeping out the window, able to come. That's when we was uncontested. It wasn't like anybody could stop you from, uh, you know, going as far as you wanted if you wanted to put in the time. Right. The only thing that could stop you is if you went on the tour, too much partying, too much hanging, because you right. know, the whole thing, the whole everything is right there at your, at your feet. Right. So my, I, I got a question Go for, ahead, for, for Pete. When you first, when you first like got on a real tour of traveling. Because all of us went, did that. I, we didn't have the chitlin circuit. We had the skating ring circuit. Mm. 
You know, we went around, you know, on school buses that broke down. That's how we started. Yeah. But when we, when you got to that point where, okay, wow. You know, you you walked out and you saw 10,000 people. Yeah. How'd you feel? Yo, that's a good question, Ty, man. I'll be honest with you, man. On the way in, it's exactly the way you explained. But then as we started catching the traction in the Runs House tour, first of all, we run on, we rode on the Runs bus for free. So we used to wake up seeing the, the shell toes with no strings in them, okay? Then, to be perfectly honest with you, every city we went to, they basically got the key to the city. So we rode through the city, okay, on five trucks playing basketball and stuff like that. Now, when you hit that stage and there was 20, 30,000 capacity, I'll be honest with you, sometimes you couldn't feel your knees until five mm. minutes to the set. This mm. is on the inside. But the power of the music, and plus having a partner, you know, worked a lot, you know, with the balance. But right. one of those shows, once we set it off and the music flowed, you bring in those choppers, you really couldn't, you didn't catch up with yourself until five minutes into the show. That's mm. when you're like, okay, when the customer's there and you're like, all right, yo, we here, how you feeling tonight? So it right, was, right. your whole, right. and then you had running them come out there. We have, that's the way we was introduced. A whole lot of superstars in this, it wasn't just performance, like, you know, run would stop the show and be like, yo, I don't want red lights. I need blue lights. And then the blue lights will show. You know, they'll listen to this. That's all shout, shout out to Run DMC. There was a time in this game, Run DMC was as big as it got. Yo, and every bit of it. And then, you know, rest in peace, Jay. Jay Damn. come out of the sky, you know, because yeah, he was part of all the music. So they had all of that beast to the rhyme and the rhyme I just made. Party after party, let's go. You know, all of that big stuff. It's the A to B to the C. It's easy as one, two, three, because you can't tuck jam after. And it used to be with it. Yo, hit it, run. And we used to see like this in yeah. like, the inspiration. Right. Like, what you had to do no lip syncing. You couldn't lip sync. You get no. Time. That's how we ran. And that's how actually DJ uh, Scratch ended up with us. Jam Master J saw us. We were right. Okay, we had a little problem. So after that, we was like, no more DJs. We get a real, a real. And we was on it like that. This is funny right. shit. We come out there. Oh, you can be here. Cleveland. What's up, y'all? Where y'all here tonight? Okay, y'all chill. We'll walk to the press play. And the real, the real, then start the show. Ty, you know where I'm at. We got yeah. our real, the real on the stage. Right. And Eric was the DJ. Wow. And Master so, Jay so originally, hold up. So originally when you started, you saying y'all had a reel to reel on stage? No, originally when we started, we had a DJ. Right. But then when we had a problem in Europe, by the time we made it back home, we was like, okay, we were young. So we said no more DJ. We went, I went to say Nash and bought a reel to reel. And then we put a show tape together so we wouldn't have a problem no more. Mm. Right. So now that we had the reel to reel in the show tape. When you came to see our show, there was no DJ up there. There was the real, the real. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I had, I had, a, I had a real, the real. Um, as a backup, I always did that right. as a backup because you never know. Right. And I always had that just in case. I had a backup, you know. And Roxanne and Shantae was so big that this we the NBA. We used to do NBA games. Mm. It'll be us, Run DMC, uh, Curtis Blow, and Houdini. Okay. All right. Damn. And we did like Atlanta, San Antonio, Cleveland, Sacramento. So they could sell tickets. They could sell no tickets for the games. Right. Oh, okay. You know, when we came, they sold tickets. Right. You know. And I saw this child, Roxanne. We would get off the plane and people would be at the airport screaming our name. <laughs> and I was a, I, the first time, first of all, Shantae was just incredible. Let's start with that, now, on stage. Right. I was afraid for her. This little girl, it's like 30,000 people because she hot, like it's hot as fire. And I'm, it's our first show. And we had scripted it because LA Sunshine, Feel is for, they was Juice Crew too. So they had rehearsed with her and scripted what she's supposed to say. Shante got out there and didn't do anything that we scripted. <laughs> but she tore that shit down. 
Right. That's how it goes, Ty. You can practice all of that. When the crowd explodes, it's either you going with what you practice or you going with what you know. But I right, know, right. You gotta live with she you went know. with what she knew. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you try to go with that and you're not sure, it don't work. And what she had going for her, she could rap off the top about anything. Mm. And it, she could rap about you in the audience. So she was, she kind of like was uh, uh, getting the audience involved with her just by rapping to them. Rapping to somebody in the audience. Right. And it got to be a thing. She all she had to do was diss somebody, diss somebody in the audience, and diss somebody on the show. And the audience was happy. So I have a Go ahead. I have a question for you and P. So and, and then it's gonna go back to Big Daddy Kane. But P, I have a question. Uh how did you feel when you heard your first record on the Mr. Magic's rap attack? And when did you hear? Uh, EPMD for the first time. P. Uh, um. Go ahead, P. Uh, you want P to go first? Yeah, P to go first. Yeah, the first time I heard it on the radio, How did you- we were bugging because we were sitting there waiting all night for it to come on, and it was only one hour. So we were sitting there, me and Eric's at my father's apartment. We thinking like uh, there's like a little more time left on the clock, about five minutes to be exact. You know, you all charged up. The whole hour, we started <laughs> things started coming down. Like, yo, all right, well, maybe next week. And I'm not lying. I'm telling you, start walking towards the radio because you know what's the hours over. You turn the radio off. We was in that mode by ourselves. Started walking towards the radio to turn the radio off, and next thing you know, started hearing the choppers. And mm-hmm. they'll slowly went from the turning it off, the backing up, bugging. You know, the window open, the door open, yelling through the neighborhood, screaming. You know, there was no beepers. There was no uh, call waiting. So you could only right. pause off. But it was an excitement that you couldn't believe because you right. had a song on the radio and you bug it. Just mm-hmm. running around in circles like, yo, there's nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that, that's, that, that, that's a feeling. And then you know you when know. we first started, people didn't know. If there was two of us, if there was one of us, so a lot of times when we would show up, even right. uh, um, it, you know what, you guys had the same problem Run DMC had with the name Run DMC. They didn't know what it was. Okay, EPM they didn't know what it was. You know, they didn't know it was no, one. You're right because early in our career, I was still in New Haven. We had the condo up there at Pine Rock. Chuck Chillout came and picked me up with MC Ice and Funk Master Flex. Mmm, mm. Master Flag. Now, anyway, though. <laughs> so, Chuck picks me up in the van. We got a show in Mass. But in my mind, I'm thinking, how are we going to do this show? But Chuck is breaking it down. Yo, you're brand new. Nobody really knows who you are. So, boom, you just go out there and you rock it. And I went out there and rocked it. I remember that show in Massachusetts for Dolo in the early parts before Strictly Business came out. It was me, mm. Light, Audio 2. Chuck Chill Out and Funk Flex. Mm. And what year was that? I was still in New Haven. So it had to be like 87. Wow. Because by 88, I know it was on the popping. So, so go ahead. The first time I heard it? Yeah, heard, heard. What was the first record you heard at EPMD? Um, I can't remember. Was it Gots to Chill? What was the first joint wow. y'all did? The first one is my it's thing. Probably- Gots to Chill. What was the first joint? It's my thing. Yes, that's what I heard. Yes, and that was that seven minute funk. You know who played it for me? Who? Will Sokolov. Oh, wow. <laughs> he played it. Oh, we just about almost finished. Right. <laughs> crazy right there. See, Ty, that's crazy. Yeah, we got 15 minutes, guys. 15 minutes, and then we're going to shut the live. Because remember, Dang. We at the, even though we got late, we still got the radio. Mm hmm. So, well, you know, he said, I got something I want you to hear. Mm. Yeah. And I, me and Magic went up to sleeping bag. And he played it. Right. And we was like, yo. Because a lot of times, I like I said, record labels called us. That's how they made the determination on how many they was going to press up. It was a test pressing. It wasn't even a record yet. Right. right. Had the white label on it. It's white. It's still white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Right. He played that. And mm-hmm. we was like, oh shit. 
Yo, where they from? Who they? You know, and I guess that made a determination on how he was going to do whatever. But that's the first time I heard him. The first, you know, the first copy we had, it was terrible because I cut the seven minutes funk so much, it was scratched. That's when Will Sock got up with Awesome 2. They met us at uh, Sleeping Bag, got us the clean cop. No, actually, they met us at uh, Latin Quarters, got us the king, clean copy, went back to Charlie's, we looped it. Mm. Uh, yeah. Do you remember? Did you? Did, was was the old man there when y'all was there? there? Juggy Gales. Juggy, yeah. Yes, and Ron Resnick. Right, right. Ron Resnick and Juggy Gale. Juggy, Gales. Juggy oh, just you know, for people to know, Juggy was a real, a much older man at the time, and but he had been down since the sixties, you know, promoting records. Right. You know, and he was down with Frankie Crocker. Frankie Crocker was like the number one guy. On the radio at the time, mm -hmm. and Juggy just used to get him to play records, you know. So, if you got Juggy promoting your records, you got somebody good. So, Will had a good had a guy with a lot of connections, old strong connections, mm. you know, right? You know, with PDs and owners. So, yeah, having Juggy, that's Juggy super bad. Real connects, like he had the real connects. Okay, he, he was he was a he was a veteran. By the time hip hop came along, he'd been in the game 30 years. Right. Wow. Okay. Got it. So his connection ain't just the DJs, his connection is the general managers and the PD. Yeah. You see, I never got to none of that because it was yeah. too busy working. Everything was moving so fast. Right. You know, you know so, yeah. You know, it's a lot of things like, you know, as, as an artist, a lot of things you don't see. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things you're not concerned about. Right, 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 right there. So, <laughs> no, you're not and I, got, we got, yeah, I think my, uh, Juggy had the pacemaker. I'm not sure if it was his first one or the second one. Yeah. Like, out there in 87. You know, so I was mostly dealing with Will and Ron, but occasionally I dealt with Juggy. Yeah. Juggy. Ron stayed high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we seen Ron, him on the yeah, to go to Europe. Ron was there. Right, exactly. Ron stayed ski. So Did I have. Ron pass away? <laughs> Did, oh, he passed away, right? Yeah, I think he passed away. Yeah, yeah I think so too. I, I got a question for both of y'all. So uh, this question is for P, and this question is for Unc. Uh, Fly tie from the founder of Cold Chilling Records and PMD of the legendary group EPMD. So where and when did Big Daddy Kane popularity start to slip in your eyes, and what was it that made him slip? Cause at one point he was like really merely moving, booming, and then all of a sudden it was like a couple of albums the later. Honest answer? Yes, honest answer. He left me. Okay. You gotta have see, it's not always about just the group. Some groups go somewhere and get a better relationship. All right, EPMD got a better relationship because they still went to somebody, Def Jam who understood hip hop and understood them. Kane went to MCA, which was a major, who did not understand hip hop. And at the same time, they had Heavy D. Mm -hmm. All right. And I remember some people calling me from MCA saying, I hope he don't come over here thinking he gonna get ahead of Heavy. So really? he was inside a label where half the people there was not going to help him. Wow. And what do you they think made him make that decision to leave? You know, I talked to Kane a lot at that point. And I was saying, check this out, Kane. I don't get it. I don't know what, what, what you do. I, you know, and this is what I said to Kane. I said, Kane, when I remember, when I met you, it was Ma. I told you it was Kane in front of people. Remember that? <laughs> and I took you to coming down out of the sky. Right. At the Apollo, selling platinum records, getting money. So I want to know, I want you to tell me this answer. What is it that somebody said to you that made you think, Ty ain't doing shit for me? What is it that, you know what I'm saying? What is it that made you think that? And then I made them understand the facts of life. I said, the facts of life is, right now the three hottest art rap artists are you, Heavy D, and LL Cool J. <coughs> and 
and I know you're not telling me you're going to LL's manager and Heavy D's label. They will destroy you. And that's Russ and that. Andre, though. Yeah. They, and I said, they don't want you because they want you, Kane. They want you because they want you away from me. That's going to make me weaker. Mm. He couldn't hear me. I said, they're going to destroy you. And, and I thought, in my mind, it's going to take a couple of years. They did that shit in six months. Really? Come on. The first thing they did with Kane, they started they started attacking him about the picture he took with Naomi Campbell and Madonna. The new pitch. Right. And the Playboy, Playgirl Center for them. They started attacking him for that. Next thing you know, they started a rumor that he had AIDS and it was finished. Mm. You know? And so, you know, and, and it takes, once again, somebody who understands you. I understood Kane. And I had a love for Kane. Like, I had a love for my artists. When you go to MCA, you just you just record number MC two zero nine six seven, right? That is it. And guess what? When you don't sell, what they do? Can't have one album over there. It wasn't like they they thought they said, "Well, it's Kane. Let's give him another shot." They got rid of him. And so, did you ever think about bringing them back to Cold Chilling after that? Remember, at the, now at the time, I had become frustrated with the record. All right. You became what? I became frustrated. With who? Kane? The record industry, record label, serial, oh. period. Because now, you got, I, I got to catch it from all sides. I, mean, I got artists whining all the time. I got to fight Warner Brothers. Because understand this. When you're on Warner Brothers, to get, to remember, you got to get on their schedule. All right. And the fight, you got to fight. This is who you got to fight to get the attention of instead. Prince, Ray Charles, Frank Sinatra, Paul Simon, Madonna, mm. Rod Stewart. Mm. So I got to come and fight them, man, and do the nail. No, nah, it's about MC Shan. No, it's about Big Daddy K. So I'm going through a fight. You understand? For him, then I got to fight with him right. at the same time. And that's what was happening. You know what? I said, you know what? I'm going back to radio. But what I did, I said, I don't want to leave everybody stranded. So I got TCF a deal. I made, I made another cold chilling deal at Sony. Okay. And I took G-Rap, Biz, IU, and uh, TCF. And then I started another label called Living Large for Shannon and Shantae. Then I went back to radio, uh, consulting Hot 97. Okay. No, no. And, um, you know, so that, which is where I started. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had, I, had, I had peace of mind, and I enjoyed doing what I was doing, and I could be creative. I, the Summer Jam, I started that. I didn't name it, but I had the idea. Let's do something. Just do an annual concert. Really? Yeah. That was my idea. Huh? About way before 97. Hot 97. It was Hot 97 came in. You 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 had some before Summer Jam was created? I had the idea oh, okay. to do an annual concert. Mm -hmm. And then Steve Smith, who just passed away. He was the PD. He named it Summer Jam after the wrestling thing, Summer Slam. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Remember, remember Summer Slam? Right. I remember. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right. So that's how he got the idea. Let's call it Summer Jam. What? Wow. You know. And right we now, did the first. Right now. Y'all hearing some jewels right now that y'all ain't never heard before. Yo, and don't see a fly. You used to play football too, as well. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I played football. Play football. I played football yeah. high school and college. Mm -hmm. I played the whole everything, all yeah. the way up into college until I left and started making music. Right, 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 right. You know, so you, the content. That's another reason I had. I want to say this right. Uh, an attraction. Uh, 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 you know, said to you. 
Right, right. You, like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You was younger than me, but you went through the same thing I did. Right. And when you play football, you got to respect another football player. Because well, I played back then, guys, in mm -hmm. high school. Oh, oh well, then you, I got to respect you because <laughs> line you're back, a pro football player. Line back the middle because line let me back. tell you something. Back then, football practice wasn't no joke. Yeah, right? for sure. Man, for real, you know, for real. We couldn't even go there. The dedication. You know what I'm saying? You know, I remember I had, my coaches used to say, I don't cut you, you go cut yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, because you can't do these practices. Or if you, you know, can't do the three days in the summer under 100 degrees, like just the That's Saturday. right. That's, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We used to have what they call Hell Week. And we used to go away to camp. Right. Okay, so you went all the way to college and played? Yeah, I played at Howard. Up. So you know what time Howard. Howard. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. HBC, yeah. you in the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know. But, but you know, it's just, um, you know, so I, once again, that's that made me say, Oh, shit, you played when well, I found you played football, yeah, you know. I, mean, I was, I, I played linebacker, right. you know, but I think he was a tight end, quarterback in high school, tight end, and okay, college, right. and punter, and both. I could have went to the NFL to punt, right? So, so you know, but you know, what I'm saying is. That shows because you gotta be dedicated to play football. Yes, there's no question. You can't be out dedicated and disciplined. Yeah, right. So I got so not to cut discipline. your wisdom, Unc. Not to cut your wisdom, Unc. But P, I wanted you to answer the question. Where do you okay. think Big Daddy Kane kind of his his momentum kind of slowed down? You see, I didn't even know the second half. I just learned that just now. I didn't know that piece. We mm -hmm. only knew from listening on the radio, touring together. Then the world began to change. Life starts to change. You get into different right. stuff, and then people go their different ways. Then, if you're strong enough to survive, then you get to come back, compare notes, and then move forward. Right. So I, I never even knew this part that Ty just broke down. I only knew it from Big Daddy Kane, the dominance, the surgeons, the coming in, getting busy from the stage standpoint of view, but also the recovery to where we at now. Mm. And you know what? And then, then you know, I got what? it. Okay, Ty. The landscape started changing when I got it hot, right? Craig Mack brought a whole new flavor. Mm -hmm. Long right. Allen, say that. Things Strong started Allen. changing. All Strong right. Allen, um. Long Allen. Craig Mack, Craig Mack, Biggie. All right. Shout out to the Long Allen boys. Yes, yes. There, were, there was three labels that we dealt with in the 90s that changed everything. Bad Boy, mm -hmm. Kidar. And rough rock. Mm, say that again because I was shouting over you. Sorry, Unc. Bad boy, mm -hmm. Kidar, and Rough Rider. Because Kidar brought you Erica Badu. Right. All right. And she was somebody who could do hip hop radio, RB radio, and jazz radio. Mm. All right. She was yeah. incredible. Yeah, definitely. All right. Bad boy yeah. brought you who you, you know who we brought you, who what happened with them. Mm -hmm. And Rough Rider. It was a girl, Siobhan Dean. She had that label and her brothers. But she had DMX and E, you know, and we went that way. So the whole uh, landscape and the style of rapping changed. That's correct. You know, and, 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 and a generation change is a big deal. And the gen there was a new generation. Big time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the, the, the late 90s kids they was, you know, four, five, six years old in the age. Right. They ain't got they got memory of it, but it's a memory like you have your mother's stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. They have memory of Kane and Slick Rick and whoever of that era. But it's like, you know, they would always say, Yeah, my mother used to listen to my big brother. Mm -hmm. You know. And then when you get in them early new millennium, Drake and all that, well, forget it. It was just a whole new flow of everything. Mm -hmm. A flow that maybe a lot of us couldn't understand, you know, but nonetheless, it, it was a movement. Right. Like, what well, you know, you know, and, and it's like, like a lot of people want me to uh, say negative things about today's rap. Right. Today's hip hop. And I have to go back to August 1984. <clears throat> When they tried to get us to walk out on hip hop, what day was they, that? Huh? Because what, they, day, huh? what day was that, Ty? What day? 
What date? August what? I said August 1984. Wow, August 1984. All right, when they showed us, the, they want to stop playing hip hop. All right, because they didn't understand it. Yeah, I can't be hypocritical. And 30 years later, say right. let's do away with this. I no can't. question, hands down, right? Because this is they're young. They got and nobody can approach us like that. We had combos like that. That would be like somebody coming in the studio listening to Headbanger. You know, right. Well, Dad, well, why don't you change this and change that? We, right. We weren't even mature enough to be able to know how to handle constructive criticism. Exactly. Not easy. Not easy. Right. Well, you know, if right. anybody says something, we took it as an attack. Super right. personal. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so not to cut your wisdom, it's our last question for the night. We, we're on the two-hour mark. I okay. appreciate everybody for coming into the room. But I just want your last... Oh, work, work, work. Yeah. No, I just want you. you got a warning? You got a warning, sir? Uh -huh. Nah, well, you know, I want them to come back next week. I want them to come back next week. Yo, pull the plug, son. <laughs> so, <laughs> my last question for the night is um, P, yeah. we're going to start with P and we ended up with Unc. Right. P, what do you think Kane, Big Daddy Kane's legacy is to hip hop? And that's the same question for you, Unc. Big Daddy Kane's legacy to hip hop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Definitely a legend, trailblazers, and one of the, I would say, in the top three greatest MCs of all times. Mm. That's what I, to this day, people still talk about Kane. Right. They still talk about Rakim. Okay? So with that being said, but again, with the, with the restructure and hip hop and us, like a lot of people have, we went through this already, Jay. The bottom line is we stopped working for a while. Okay? And then now the younger guys had to pick up the torch with no supervision, no leadership. So they had to fend for self. Right. So that's like them coming and they got their campfire coming. You can't go to their campsite. And what are you going to tell them? They built their own fire and we wasn't here. So the last right. thing we're going to do is go start talking down on them. Right. But it's also our market of the golden era and the fly ties that are still here. Because to me, it looked like we went so far that we had to come back to things like this to recognize what we actually did so we can move forward. So I was out there with Kane on those tours, you know what I'm saying? Not just on the stage, you know, all the other stuff that comes with hip hop, you know, and to this day, he's still the force uh, to reckon with. So I think when it's all said and done, he goes in the top three, top MC soloist. Okay. You know, that's the beauty of where you can't change time and time is frozen when you listen to a, uh, a roar, you know what I'm saying? Or ain't half, no, ain't no half stepping. When you talk about catalog and you talk about music, and I even seen up there, you know, uh, you know, real hip hop fans, uh, right. Big Daddy Kane song on the Juice soundtrack. Right. You know what I mean? So you go through stuff because that's what life is about. You learn, you know, and you go through the tribulations. But I just was with Kane like two weeks ago, you know, rocking. And uh, we was out there moving on the music tip, but there was all some things as as artists and us working together collectively that we was able to uh, put together some dope stuff. Right, that's dope. And, and I also got to say, when I was going through some stuff, Kane always spoke to me to the point right. where I'm up and I'd be like, yo, Kane, you're looking. Right. right. In the Bismarck, so we can't, yo, we lost Bismarck. Right. And that's super pain on the stage for me. This is PMD Mike Doc. When we do that, rest in peace, man. Like, you know, some people pass away and it's like, okay, cool. And then it's gone a little and then you just move on. It's, it's not like that with Biz. Biz was too, at least to me, he was that big that when a person like that's not, not here no more, who's going to fill those shoes? Right. right. But in, in my opinion, you know, so. When and, we, and also about Biz, like everybody doesn't stay the same in their personality. Mm. Because Biz kept growing and growing and growing. But whenever you saw Biz, he was still Biz. Right. He was Adam, a fake. I seen some the Gabba Gabba. Yo, right. come on, are you kidding me? Like yeah. Biz, his shows, his shows he had us. He was behind Dougie's show for show. Hold on. He had a show for show. Gabba Gabba, big stuff. And there's one more. His DJ got more paid more money for DJ. Yeah. So Biz was there. His record collection, like, yo, but, but my like biz that. always he was doing TV. Yeah. Oh, everybody. Yo, 
Yeah. That movie I saw, it, I didn't know. The last thing that he was in was it was Blackish. Mm. That I saw. He was in that TV show Blackish. But my point, he was in a lot of stuff. And stars, big stars, everybody knew biz. Yeah. Everybody know biz. Yep. All right. That's so where yeah. it goes with Big Daddy Kane, because it starts right. with Biz, and then Kane came in. And then right. exactly. where we at now. So yeah. that's why they're giving them the roses. This is why we're here. Because we got the rock as artists and be out there on the front line. But then through giving them through roses, you learn so much about the artists that you already rock with that you didn't know. Mm -hmm. you, didn't know you didn't know what it took for them to actually climb that mountain until you right. actually do uh, look at uh, give, give them their roses. Right. And so, um, one question. They, they, and that's I'm, big because most of the people get their roses when they're dead. Sorry to right. put you on your own show, J. Bill. But I had yeah. that in there, man. Yeah, well, listen, you know, giving them flowers is, is the point of recognizing um, the artists now and letting their peers do it. You know, we could have did a podcast, but I wanted to do an actual show. Um, so I have one last question. It's from Les Charles. What was the vibe like recording the symphony, um, Unc? What, was you there when they recorded the symphony? He wanted well, to know what the vibe was like. Symphony is a funny record. Sam was supposed to be on the symphony. Really? Not, not Ace. And why wasn't Biz on the symphony? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. know, that it was, it was, it was the rappers. That's what it was for the rappers. Biz, you know, was just not considered a rapper. Right. And anyway, it would be Shan, G, Kane, Craig G. Well, Shan was, in, as always was, was bickering with Molly. Mm -hmm. And Molly was always bickering about something. All right. So F y'all, I ain't doing it. Blah, 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 blah. And Shannon's one of them, I ain't doing it, mother. He'll say, I ain't doing it. In the face of money. He'll tell you, I, ain't, I don't care how much money you offer him. If he say he ain't doing it, you can't make him do it. You can't increase the money. None of that. Anyway, he says he's not doing it. Ace was just going to the symphony just to hang with Craig. He wasn't going to. He was going to watch his man. Yeah. Rap on the symphony. Mm -hmm. When they get there, Shan mm -hmm. ain't there. Marley said, you got a rhyme? Yeah, I got a rhyme. Mm -hmm. And that rhyme sets it off. Listen closely. That just, you know, sets the whole thing off, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was all, there was a thing between G and Kane. Quiet, but it was there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really? You know what I'm saying? Who was the nicest? Right. You know, it was there. It wasn't it wasn't spoken out loud, okay. but it was there. Right, Mr. Billing. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I, I almost see, got see, I'm not your fly. I ain't messing with you. Speak on it tonight, Unc, but you didn't. You fooled me. You bamboo. Mm -hmm. Well, but that's for the next <laughs> one. That's for the next one. And right. Frank Ty, for real. So, so man, it's an honor. Like we did the interview and everything. But with me being older, man, like just to be on this platform and right. the knowledge and just to know, you know, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. I just yeah. like, as an artist is one thing, as a production producer is one thing, but then to to really be able to sit back and realize like, wow, I got to enjoy Molly. I got to enjoy all of these artists, but I'm looking at the person who made it possible. Right. Well, thank That's you. That's major. Right. You're welcome. Thank That's you. big. You know. And then, you know, and Ty, everybody know how serious you, you are. So that shit's great. Yeah, it's something, you know, and, and somebody got to do the actual work. Right. 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 It's creative, but somebody got to do the work. Oh, it's like I'm waking up out of the time warp. Well, I'm done with all that. Now it's back yeah. to the artists and having fun and chilling. Right. But somebody got to do the work. Somebody got to do the work. You know. That is so true. And, and, and somebody, and that was me. You know, I had to do the work. Right. I had to, no matter what it was, I had to make it happen. Right. You know. Same and, here. And, and, and Magic, and I, and the, in the beginning, let's say Magic was like he was the boss. He was king. Right. Magic was hard to please. Yeah. yeah. You know? I heard. I heard, and he was very yeah. vocal too, right? Yeah. You can't. You know what? You you had to 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 make him happy. You had to make him happy. You know, and then as time happy, went on, happy, happy. <laughs> Magic started listening to me all the time. 
Right. Because there was never, you know, he trusted my 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 business acumen. You know, he trusted what I did, and he only really trusted what I did because I made things happen. Right. You know, and, and I made deals everywhere. You know, even like there used to be a company called People Express Airline. Mm -hmm. All right. The regular travel agents didn't want to deal with them because the commission was so low. All right. I just got people to express the, the airline for the hip hop, for the rap. Because that made us be able to go around the country. Just the fares were so low, you go back and forth to California for $129. So promoters could afford it. So I would have all the promoters buy the tickets through our travel agents, Hurricane Travel. Right. You want a limo? We own the limo company. RK Limo. You know, Romero, he was down with us. Romero is Jay Z's driver today. Mm, right. All right. Right. My driver was Romero. You know, and he's down with Jay Z now. But we did whatever it took. And, we, and you know, and I always had money coming in. That was our, my function. Always have money coming in. Right. Right. So well, so I have parties every weekend in four boroughs, sometimes five. Right. I might have three on Friday, two yeah. on Saturday. And right. the only top star we had was Mr. Magic could be there. Wow. That's it. Mm -hmm. And Magic was not a DJ DJ. He was an announcer. Right. So the only thing he had to do was come on stage and say he was there. Magic you come here 15 minutes, then that's it. So and now I had to, so, huh? No, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. We were going into Future Flavors with Molly Ma, was extension of that. Which right, was, all that came, all that came later. That right. came later. But, but all that is because too. of the rap attack. Right, that's correct. You know, by the time, by the time Future Flavors come along, now Magic and Molly are bickering. Yo, Todd, look at Jay. He's in the candy store. He's in the candy store. Yo, Joe, come on, man. Cut it out. I was looking forward to you. So see it? There was a question. There, there, was, a question. there was a no, question. There was a question for you. Hip-hop fans, when you got, you know, right. one of the real trailblazers and the real pioneers speaking the real, then, you know, the people respond. I know, and they respond. They respond. They like that. So, so the question is, what did y'all think of the Kane and KRS-One verses? What was your thoughts on that? I like everybody else. I thought it was good for hip hop. I, you know, I, I I didn't even look at it as a battle. I looked at it as entertainment, you know, and I and I I enjoyed it, you know. It was one of the one of the verses that I enjoyed because I I enjoyed some verses. I didn't enjoy them all, mm -hmm. you know. But I really liked the Kane and Chris one, you know, and it was it was just you know it was, it was hip hop. Okay, mm -hmm. that's that's what I saw. Right. Yeah, and the same here, because with me, just the respect for Kara Rishman, the respect for Kane, but then also I had a couple of my guys in there on the support. You had Das Effects with Kara Rishman, and DJ Scratch was DJing for Big Daddy Kane. Mm -hmm. You know, so looking at it from the perspective, it was balanced, and I thought it was dope. Right. And you know, me and Scratch grew up in the same projects. Oh, you and Scratch? Yeah, me and Scratch from Albany. I'm from right, Albany right, Project. Right, Albany, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm mean, here a few years behind me, but yeah, I'm from Albany. He's from Albany, right? So no, that time matters. That time counts, man. That's what I'm learning now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, know what? You know, yeah, it counts. You know, there was because there's things that by the time you got it was going on, but there's a reason right. they got to that. Yo, Ty, you killing it. We didn't have that part. That's what Biz was telling me, man. This thing yeah, there's a reason. That there's a there's a way it got me, to that. Yeah, me and Biz was on a reservation. And um, doing a big show, and Biz was talking to me, and I only had sleeping bag records from when I got there. Mm -hmm. Eighty-seven. Biz sat me down on there, and he was showing me from when he had some music on sleeping bag records and what he was going through out there in the hip hop community, where he had to fall back and diss a couple of cats. So mm -hmm. we right. were before the show, and he's playing the music, and I'm seeing the sleeping bag logo. So my whole point was. He brought me up to speed where Sleeping Bag Fresh Records was before right. I met with this my thing, and it helped me like you couldn't imagine. Right. Yeah. You know, big shout out to Bismarck because you have some people out there too. Bismarck people on here. Right. 
Well, Mantronics was on your label too, right? Who? Mantronics. Mantronics, yeah, Mantronics uh, Joy Sims, Just Ice. Right. Yeah, we had, yeah. Steezo. 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 Uh, nice and Smooth. Yeah. Nice and Smooth, yeah. Yeah, we had some stuff moving. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a crew. Mm-hmm. Well, who was managing you at that time? In the beginning, I was managing myself, Strictly Business, until we got to the Runs House tour. Right. And then I think we did that for like two two albums. And then It's hard to manage yourself. Yo, forget about it. That's done. But you don't know that while you're doing it. But you, you don't know what you're doing. What you at the time. Right. You know, but you know most that. managers, you're right, because I heard it. Like, when you really... See, like, in other words, I could talk about you. I could talk about you in a way you can't talk about you. Right. See, I could say he's the best shit since sliced bread. What you talking about? You say that you can see it. Mm-hmm. And got an attitude. Mm-hmm. I, I could I could talk about that the greatest thing ever happened because I'm the manager. Right. And we're not doing it for less than this, and I could do all of that. Okay. And it makes you look good. It's like I get an example with Biz. See, I knew my artists up and down. One of us called me complaining about Biz on the road. He was on a retail promotion tour where he had to go to stores and sign autographs. So they know I can handle this. So I get out, it's in Maryland. There's a line of like thousands of people. This is when Just a Friend is out. Oh my goodness. Thousands. I already know he don't want to sign all that shit before I even get inside the store. Common sense gonna tell me <laughs> he can't sit there and sign all that. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna take the weight. I walk in, the first thing I say is, okay, you're the last one, we have to move on. That gives him a chance to say, come on, Ty, let me do some more. Mm. So he looks good to the fan. Right. All right. the nigga says, Biz wanted to do it, but his manager wouldn't let him. Right, right. Now, if he would want to go, he looked like the bad guy. He looked like the bad guy. He looking like when Biz could, like when you could come and say, yo, yo, Ty, man, are you kidding me? Let me just get 10 more. Right. He'd be like, listen, only five. He's right, like looking like the, the stuck-up artist. Right, so that that's the hard thing about managing yourself, mm-hmm. you know. And like you said, you learn that that's you know um, that that's 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 really not the way to go. Yo, you know? what? You know, you do what you got to do for the time that you're in. Yes, you, you listen. You you were in learning mode. Mm-hmm. Right, you understand? Yeah. You, you first of all, you're a college student. You got in your mind. I'm I'm I got brains to do this. You understand? I could do this. Mm-hmm. Sure. They stop that makes all the sense in the world. Can they, the they stop blitzing every play? Come on. Every, yeah. Every play? Yeah, every play. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah you know, hey, I, now, not, not to cut your wisdom, but P, you told me you had respect. You told me we was all supposed to go out to dinner last time I was in New York. We was trying to link mm. with Unk. But you told me about how much respect you have for P, for um Unk. And then yeah. you told me, you said, yo, Unk was a gangster back then. He oh, was hot. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know you don't talk. Man, we ain't going to talk about it. I did, I did at least three shows. You don't understand. Like when he said those 30,000 capacities, yo, know, you couldn't even feel your knees, okay? So when you come in from energy like that, sometimes, fly, you probably don't even remember. I rode home. It was a big show. I don't remember what show it was. They got mixed up with the cars. All I know is I got in the car and I looked and I was like, oh, shit. And we were riding together. I think we did something at the Apollo. But back there, man, we ain't going into it. <laughs> we ain't going to it. That, right there? Man. Well, well, listen, you know, I let's just put it to you this way. He kept it on him. Now let me stop. I, I was I, I wasn't I wasn't having it in terms of my artists and what I did. And everybody knew that, you know. Everybody and I, and I and and I've had problems that I had to solve in a certain way, right? You know, because because you know some listen in life. Period. If people think they can take advantage of you, they will. Yeah. All right. And I have to show you I'm not the one that you're gonna take advantage of. You right. know. And as you know, being out there on that road, when you in that town, you at the mercy of that town. Yeah. All right. And this is the truth that a lot don't have, right? 
Right. You you, you know you like they own the town, not even knowing what the town is about. What the town is about. You can't get a lot of New York cats mm -hmm. got in trouble because they thought because they were from New York, right? It was like that. Right. But you go to Cleveland, they will kill you. You go to Detroit, they will kill you. You go to some parts of the South, they will kill you. You gotta, and you can't just be a gangster. You need to see to the, the 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 greatest thing about gangsters, real gangsters, is they deny being a gangster. Yeah. They are not, no, I'm I sell grapes. Right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a gangster. Right. All right, but they know how to put things at us. They they know when how to uh, when it takes conversation, when it takes money, and when it takes muscle. Right. All right. And you got to know how to apply all three at a certain. You got to know how to apply them. Right. You know, and and you want to try to apply the first two first. Yeah. Right. Friendship. Can I pay my way out of this? All and right. Alvin Tony different. was. There was only one Alvin. Exactly. Yeah. Al yeah. B. Yeah. Al B. We went everywhere. One man, and that was it. You yeah. know. Yeah, I know. Oh, right. So that's that's it. You had to be able to communicate. Yeah, so you got, you know, you can't, you can't listen. Let's understand what the music industry was. The music industry was gangster driven. Let's get real about it. All right. The music industry was gangster driven. I don't care if it was a major label or independent. Gangsters is involved. Yeah. All right. Mafioso is involved. Okay. Whether the artists know it or not. You know, it might they, but they they involved with it. Listen, my office was on the at the penthouse in the Jamaica Savings Bank building on Broadway. Mm, okay. When I moved across the street from next door to sleeping bag, right? I had to pay sanitation. How the hell I got to pay sanitation on the 18th floor? Right. I'm hearing shot, right, right, right. 2022, but I'm going back looking at it, right? It's clear now, right? It's clear you got now. You got the presentation, my man. That's mm -hmm. all it is to it. Right. Well, you know, I, go ahead. everybody around here paying sanitation. So you got to pay sanitation. I don't care about you, you dump your shit in the trash can. <laughs> well, uh, look, we got to say it, that. Unk still creeping into, you know, we have a series coming out, 13 episodes. It's not about his life, but his story is about his life. It's called The Greatest, no, excuse me, <laughs> The Golden Era of Cold Chilling. Oh, I yeah. thought you was calling me the greatest of all time. You oh, are. Okay. You, the goat, you the goat to me. You the goat to me. But Listen, 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 you. listen. You got to look back at this thing, man. You know, for me, mm -hmm. I look back at it with joy. Right. Even the negative things, you understand, because it was all a part of what I am and who I am now. Right. You mm -hmm. Understand. Yeah. Well, you know, so so that's 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 what it is. You got to take that with a grain of salt and be happy we made it this far. Right. You know, because you know, real quick, I can I tell this story. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I had a mansion, twenty-seven rooms. All right, seven bedrooms. I had a receiving yeah. room. What the fuck is a receiving room? <laughs> I had a solarium. I had a breakfast nook. <laughs> Which is outside the kitchen. Yeah, All I, right. got, listen, I, got I had a dining room. room. I had a ballroom. I had a wine cellar. I had a gym. I had all of that. But at the end of the day, I could only be in one room at a time. Right. 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 At the end of the day, I couldn't be in all the rooms at the same time. Right. So I could have been in, in left rack in that one room joint. <laughs> it doesn't right. matter because I could only be in one room at a time. But you didn't know. You know anytime, when you have all that, that's right. when you realize, okay. And, and the next thing, my house was so big. At night, my kids were scared to death. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. They come jumping in the bed with us. Messing right. on my sex game. <laughs> mm -hmm. God, that was too big to hear and stuff. Right. Yeah. Everyone. I fear shit. So, but I, I know what I did. I used to talk to the ghosts and say, listen, y'all don't fuck yeah. with me. 
I won't fuck with you. Now we done. <laughs> okay, yeah, now we done, Jay. Oh, wow, that's hey, a oh, man. Formula, right? Listen. But you know, it's just so much, you know, I've had, I've been places, man, because he, uh, uh, Craig can tell you, I got a youth group I deal with. Right. I've had over 200 kids every day in Brooklyn. And since 2002, I've sent over 1,300 kids to college, at-risk kids, project kids. Okay. That's when my life became in 1996, saving kids where I come from. Right. All right. And I've been places where $100,000 ain't nothing. But I've also been places where $10 is a whole lot of money. Somebody will kill you for $10. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to take everything, you know, be be happy for what we got. Be happy that we live in. Yeah. We still among the land of the living. Right. Especially in, 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 in light of all the deaths we've seen in the last couple of years. I know you've seen a lot of deaths. We've seen, we seen a bunch of deaths in hip hop. Wow. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That'd be like, what? For sure. Not. Ecstasy, I just seen him. Mm -hmm. Right. I just talked to Mark. He did to me. He did. Right. Right. All, son, all of these, you know. This, I was just with him. I don't even want to get into the, 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 because there's so much that we could tackle tonight and yeah. there's other things that we could get into. But I know it's, it's, it's gone on two and a half hours. I kind of wanted to keep the, but I mean, it, it's so much education is what they get. Yeah. What most people don't understand. Yeah. In this chat is I have the luxury honestly to be on the phone with both of them for hours at a time and talking to them and, and, and soaking up a lot of this knowledge but I do appreciate them sharing some of the things that I know but being able to sit here this long with you guys and give you a history lesson not from just what you might know but from their own personal experiences and I do appreciate everybody for joining the 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 watching the show, coming on the live, asking your questions, donating to the to fund. Cause the more you guys help, the 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 bigger I can make it, the more people we can get, and we can kind of give you these firsthand stories right out of their mouth. Do you just heard what he said? A lot of these artists and people are leaving us. And so the best way to hear these stories is from them themselves. So I want to thank you, Unc. For always being there and, and anytime I call you pick up the phone it's funny I want to tell them a quick funny story and it's very quick normally uncle be like all right craze I gotta go bye and hang up the phone on me <laughs> <All right. laughs> but tonight he gave me two and a half solid hours of 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 unadulterated information that you're only gonna hear from him P2 salute to you P if y'all close up with anything, give them your social media handles, and we're going to wrap things up. Okay, well, I'm on Instagram, PMD underscore Mike underscore Doc. Same thing, Facebook, uh, Paris Smith, and the Twitter is PMD or VPMD. P, you got anything coming up that they could go check out? I know yeah. you got the NFTs popping right now. Yeah, I got the new NFTs coming, got a couple of shows coming up, got some new music coming. And just having fun with hip hop as we begin to move forward, like just coming out of this COVID, getting back into our groove. Right. Okay. And Unc? I'm on Instagram, Fly Tie CEO. And like I said earlier, <clears throat> my life now is with these kids. We're a marching band. Uh, Brooklyn United is what we call. Um, you could, we're in quite a bit of stuff. You could just look us up <clears throat> at Brooklyn United MB. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, you see what we're doing because we're going to Nor Norway, South Africa, and Japan. Oh, wow, really? So, mm -hmm. you know, we've already been to, to we went to South Africa last year, we've been to um, uh, and you Australia. Two time you go with them, huh? Do you Excuse take me? with them too, or you just set it up so they can go? Or I'll take some well, I, until I until I got sick, I, I wasn't I couldn't okay. go, but okay. I was always going. Oh, yeah, I was, I was always going with them. Wow. Yeah, that's my that's that's listen. Talk about my heart, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, since this was 1996, and we started 2002, sending our first kid to college. As a matter of fact, when I was in D.C., he owns the largest club in D.C. now, okay. called Park on 14th. Mm -hmm. All right, and he's also into um, 
uh, insurance. Okay. So I got a lot of kids that are doctors and lawyers now that came from the Albany Projects and the Brevoir Projects and the Marcy Projects, you know? Mm. So I feel, you know, when you talk about my, my legacy, that's my legacy. Right, okay. Right. You know, I know Russell got involved. A lot of artists, a lot of people helped me. Russell helped me. He got me a lot of money. Okay. From different organizations, different corporations, wow. all right, to buy uniforms, instruments, and all that, all right? But when he first came, he said, you're tired. You know, how can you come out here with all these... Because, you know, they, they look like Project Kids. And I said, you know what? I managed the Juice Crew. <laughs> if I can mess with them, them was kids with money. Mm -hmm. These kids, these, they just got attitude right. and, mis and misunderstanding. Right. Once I make them understand, it's good. Right. Yeah, so. Wow, that's amazing, Ty. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I want y'all to stop by one time, man. When you, yeah. you know, because see, what I like to do is have people come give them words of wisdom that look like that, right? You know, I come from where you come from. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's what I want them to hear. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. So, so, yo, you know, we're gonna catch up with that definitely. Yes, yeah, sir. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in tonight. Remember, every set, I'm sorry, every Saturday, every Monday at 7 p.m. on YouTube, giving them their flowers. Next episode is Naughty by Nature, hosted by uh, Super Lover C. And right after that, we're going to do a live. And uh, we have some more special guests come in and chime in. Thank, uh, I want to thank Unk, which is the founder of Cold Chilling. Tyrone Fly Ty Williams. He just got an award. Uh, tell him about the award real quick, Unc, that you got. At oh, yeah, I, I was awarded at my alma mater, Howard University, and Warner Brothers. Right. Warner Brothers paid for a wing. I graduated from the School of Business. Okay. They paid for a wing in the School of Business. And I don't know. I, I got, they, they Somehow they pulled my name out the hat. And Warner Brothers and um, Howard honored me at when they cut when they did the ribbon cutter. Mm -hmm. right. And um, they did what was really, I mean, it was great. They had the, the students who had studied about me over the semester, and they were asking questions and telling stories about me that they read and known, you know, and um, there were some execs from Warner Brothers who also graduated from Howard who were telling how I inspired them to do what they did. So right. it, was, it, was, it was a good feeling day. And it was at the homecoming, so, you know. Oh, sure. Okay. And they gave me a big, a big, Platinum record, you know, that says something about me. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, congratulations. Cool. congratulations. Yeah. 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 If you go on his Facebook, you can see the actual record. If you go on his Instagram, you'll see the award that he got this weekend. Very prestigious, very mm -hmm. nice. Um, I appreciate both of y'all. I love y'all. Okay. You know that. Yeah. Hunk, I love you. You know that. P, you yes. know you too. Yo, no doubt, Jay. And we All are right, guys, 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 everything. I'll be catching up with you. I'll be seeing you soon. Right. All right then. Okay. Next week, y'all, giving them them flowers, giving them their flowers. Naughty by nature, seven p.m. on my YouTube channel. Directly after that, we're gonna go live again with Super Lover C, and we have a couple other guests. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Good night. No doubt. All Good right. Night. Peace. All right. Peace. Yeah. Peace.